Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. I believe ministry starts with knowing God, not blessing people, not building churches. The, the foundation for true ministry is a personal encounter with God. There's no man who is truly qualified, no matter what earthly and physical ordination, there is no man who is qualified to claim to be in ministry except you understand the God that you are sent to represent. For the most part, the average preacher is concerned with dispensing truths. Listen carefully. Teaching, writing books, holding conferences. And I agree with that. There is a place for that. But I am telling you true ministry from God's standpoint is your secret place with God. Because every ministry will rise to reflect your knowledge of God. So you are really in ministry when you grow. It's proof of your love, not just for God, but for the people you lead. Every man of God will impart his limitation or otherwise on the people sent to be under his care so the foundation for true ministry is the knowledge of god unfortunately you see knowing god is not a very attractive thing there is no charismatism around knowing god there is no there's nobody watching you to give you the uploads that we so desire knowing god is painful knowing god is time consuming Knowing God is boring. It is not natural for man in his human nature to seek God. We don't have that kind of allowance. We always like to see the results of what we are going to get before we start. But when you start with God, he says, follow me. I will make you. But the extent of the making will be something I will reveal on the way. Follow me. So the disciples were frustrated. What are you turning us into? We've been following. Tell us. Give us a clue. And he looked at them. We continue to follow you every day. You cause trouble. And I mean what? Just give us a preview. Let us know. And one time they were tired of following. And they took initiative. And when Jesus was not around. They brought an epileptic patient. And they said let's quickly try to shine. And they were utterly disappointed. When Jesus came, they were angry. They had to probe him. They said, why didn't this happen? Hallelujah. The knowledge of God. The knowledge of God. The knowledge of God. The knowledge of God. Moses, before he started ministry, when he had an encounter with God, please listen. I'll be as simple as possible. He said, who shall I tell Pharaoh? sent me you're not going to stand before pharaoh and speak opinions and god said ah you are asking an interesting question okay let's leave the issue of pharaoh now let me reveal myself to you 
he says i am that i am please listen to me the safest anchor you will ever hold in ministry is not finance in ministry bank account it's not social media presence it's not even your intellect when all is said and done it is your knowledge of god that becomes your safest and most secure anchor let's be very careful because the times that we live in there is a lot of confidence in billions of naira and dollars in the account wonderful exegesis of scripture i'm a good teacher i'm a good preacher wonderful i'm innovative i am this and that and that and then our knowledge of god is very small very small and we find out that we do everything that should make ministry work yet it does not work every true ministry starts from the secret place not the pulpit the secret place and it doesn't matter if it's fivefold ministry or ministry as business or ministry as leadership it doesn't matter it will still start from the secret place so he revealed himself unto moses showed him certain dimensions of his glory he said now you have seen and you are convinced go and tell pharaoh let my people go god prepares you so that you are not scared of what you see you see when you really see god nothing else will scare you ministry is scary without an encounter i remember a gentleman three four years ago who just sent me a text he said he had a dream and he was going to start a church i said well i don't think it's the best decision he said you know the guy just cut off and went away started a church and just three or so weeks ago he sent me a text he said i can't believe what my life has become what is this and i told him when you stand before pharaoh without seeing the burning bush you've heard me say it again and again the first issue that started squeezing him was finance and then the second the reality of living with men And then all kinds of things and i told him i said you, you see what you've done to yourself say unto archippus take heed to the ministry that you have been given from god that thou fulfill it everybody say encounters please say it again say encounters if you do not know god you don't have a message if you do not know god you don't have a basis for representing him many preachers do not know god they were only ordained by a pastor they needed more pastors and they said now we want to expand and please i'm not being sarcastic at all you know my love for the body of christ and so i can now say we want to open 20 branches one two three four five i've observed your life come you are pastor this you are pastor that you are pastor this find your way here find your way there and the people get there and they know ministry ethics but they don't know god they know how to preach they understand all the homiletics and hermeneutics and everything but they do not know god and so the staying power especially when things don't produce as expected is not there let not the wise man glory in his wisdom let not the strong man in his might let not the rich man in his riches but let him that glory yet glory in this please listen that he know it and understandeth me i don't trust anything in my life outside god he's uncertain the bible says that god has no variableness nor shadow of turning that's a serious statement he doesn't have night and day there is stability so when the anchor of your life and ministry is god no matter what happens you will remain standing 
is God speaking to us this morning? Encounters. I remember years ago when the Lord started with me. You've heard me say it, and I will keep saying it again and again. God denied me the privilege of doing so many things. And it was very, very painful. All that I had to do was spend time with him and build. No preaching, no nothing. And at that time, there are a number of people here who were in Zaria. At that time, you know, now there's a lot of the teaching has stabilized a lot of things. But those who were there in Zaria at that time, oh boy. You could see a man of God who can be... You know, all kinds of paraphernalia. Three or four people holding the briefcase and the man is just moving up and down, well suited in a hot sun with nothing. No message, no encounters. And I felt really sad for some of these people. I remember once and again trying to reach out to them and say something may be wrong and you will regret it eventually. But they wouldn't listen. The greatest way to hurry in life is to stay with God. If you ever call staying with God a delay, you are joking. If I sit in Dangote's office from morning till night, I may not say I wasted my day. Because humanly speaking, in one moment and with one check, he probably can create a lot of possibilities around my life. We have indoctrinated ourselves, listen, into thinking that time spent with God is a waste. He's shortchanging your time for shining. We think the only way to shine is when you stand before men. No. I've learned the power of the secret place no matter what happens in your life if you stay in the secret place then you continue to move forward are we together everybody say encounter if you're in ministry here please listen carefully i don't care whether you've been in it 10 years two years your secret life must be greater than your public life to excel I continue this is very hard for me now even as I'm speaking because of my schedules and all of that it's very difficult it is luxury for me to really find quality time I tell you sincerely you must know God you must have a serious encounter with God Encounters produce convictions. Convictions. I have a lot of regard for people who are sincerely wrong. Because even in their error, they have conviction. I don't have a lot of regard for people who vacillate convictions at any show of hope. It's better for me to be sincerely wrong and stand there it is easy to be adjusted that's why jesus had a problem with the scribes and the pharisees all of the people who were there the madman knew he had demons he just sat down there and it was easy for him to be free are we together now an encounter creates convictions so that you don't believe this today believe this tomorrow return back to what you believe next week you are not going to be an effective minister that way because i'll be teaching you shortly you have to build people sequentially along a thought line. I think this is one big mistake that pastors make. I don't want to go ahead of myself. We think that ministry exploits is in the scarceness of the truths we share. That means every Sunday there must be one mystery or one thing I would dish out. And once people are saying, mm, boy, my God, can you imagine this dimension? You will find out after two, three years that it's like hopping to every faculty for lectures and expecting to be awarded degree. My question is, in what? You didn't stay long enough in a department to be awarded that degree. Nobody is giving a degree in nothing. Convictions. 
many preachers do not have convictions we teach and then you return back and doubt you too you were not very sure of what you taught you just return and say ah i hope i did the right thing i just hope that the truths that i share are really truths and after 10 20 years you'll find out that a lot of preachers will now say this ministry thing i'm done with it i was going to minister in house on the rock pastor fred and i a gentleman came and met me and said apostle my father was once a pastor i said so what happened he said right now the man recites quran he has become um what they call these these teachers yes i said what happened i will not mention the denomination just to honor them i said what happened he said he was a preacher nothing was working and they kept giving them you know the, they have the manual that you used to preach and when the guy finished the preaching he would go back and say what is this why am i deceiving myself it's not working my family is dying my life is dying i'm sick i'm tired many preachers are like that there are central topics shared around there are conventions you must hold when the time comes there are reports you must give doesn't matter whether god moved or not and so that ritual over a long time erodes god out of the process administration is important but without god is hellfire i believe in encounters i truly believe in convictions anything i'm not convicted about you will never hear me teach it there are things and areas you may never hear me teach on i may touch it here and there but my conviction has not grown beyond a threshold level to communicate it and i don't want to feel guilty for communicating that area are we together now we need convictions still on encounters you see let me teach us something very powerful by the privilege of god's grace the pattern for your ministry comes out of your experience with god listen very carefully god is a god of patterns and in as much as there are universal laws and principles we must be very careful i believe the suggestion to put the ark on a cart was because they saw it somewhere i don't believe they just said oh let's decide to put it on a cart they probably saw them carrying another deity through the ark and they say this is a cheaper method i mean why burden men when donkeys can do the work and in doing that there was a serious trouble in many pastors conferences and respectfully so we have to be very careful blueprints that were not part of the design moses received the blueprint on the he was not the architect but he received the blueprint the dimensions were given it's not enough to build the tabernacle you must build according to pattern if it will host the glory of god you need a pattern it's good to receive mentorship it's good to emulate but you must sit down lord how is this going to happen there are times he will say for your ministry you will only stand still and the egyptians you see today you will not see forever other times he will say go around jericho seven times it is not every time you stand near the water you have to part it there are times he will need you to walk on it so don't assume that because the water parted yesterday you will part it tomorrow your pattern comes out of your experience out of your experience if you don't have an experience with god you will not have a pattern for ministry whatever trends is what you will hop into is god blessing us this morning an encounter with god creates convictions an encounter with god creates patterns the edge of any effective ministry among other things is the pattern we win generally in life not necessarily by the dexterity of the army but the flawlessness of the strategy it is also true spiritually i know a man of god who 
I think he once listened to my teaching where I was talking about the fact that you may not see any poster of koinonia here and there and the guy got up with zeal without knowledge and went to tell his people say no you know if apostle can do it I can do it and then they refused they, they said no visitors sleep again no um, uh, what do you call it uh, flyer he even truly speaking cancelled they have what they call a follow-up department cancelled everything say if God cannot bring them by and the guy was suffering terribly terribly it wasn't even him that reached out to me it was someone else that reached out to me and said please you will need to help my pastor i think something is wrong let it not be that is your message that is confusing this man and i said no you see there is a difference between a doctrine and a personalized dealing there are blueprints that god gives you on account this is one of the benefits of the secret place there are things that god will give you customized to your work with god it is an error if you build a doctrine out of it most of the traditions that destroy the body today started as personalized dealings that god gave men because of my work with god listen carefully it's possible that to create efficiency god can tell me you my son do not have more than three children this is my dealings for you i have weighed it and seen that your most efficient state will be with three children only now when i take that person because of the efficiency that comes by keeping in what to what god told me i will now say look the most recommended way to be effective in ministry is to have three children whereas the destiny of the next prophet is in the fifth child tradition will stop a prophet from coming to bless a generation preachers let's learn this this is why encounters are powerful i'm still buttressing on encounters that god will teach you the difference there are things god has told me you will never 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 hear me tell anybody it's between me and god it's like a code of operation come pastor it's like a spiritual system of operation so the for william branham listen for william branham there was a way that the angel of the lord will come in a meeting are we together now william branham will wait to, for a long time praise and worship the worship team is singing and the guy will just wait what are you waiting for he says waiting for the angel it was a pattern and as soon as the angel came that's it his eyes if that angel did not come sir this man it will be like a charm he can't see now by the time we create a ministry out of that and you now mentor people that the only way to minister is to wait for the coming of william branham's angel are you seeing that now before you know it a spirit will come as that angel because these spirits can appear as angels of light this is how many people got into error subconsciously so an angel will come and tap you and say i'm here now this guy's name is femi you say what's your name femi you say this thing is working i mean i can't, I can't believe this you didn't go into error knowingly not understanding the difference between a doctrine you don't change doctrines they are they are principles defined by god's integrity but because of the unique nature of man as an entity god will have to create a system a curriculum unique to you that's why every man must know god for himself i know men of god who don't worship this is a distraction to them you are playing that and clashing symbols they say two of you go out of my meeting please don't distract me and you are wondering how in the world is this guy going to heal the sick you keep watching you just keep watching the moment is time he will tell you it's time and from nowhere you will see people flinging wheelchairs and there are people when there is no keyboard when there is nothing playing you will truly think that they used to carry charms they will stand and look helpless and powerless benny him up until today huh benny him you see the way this protocol guy stand you stand in front in benny him's meeting like that he will send you away 
he doesn't want all of that they choose those who sit in front he doesn't want anybody when you are sharing and he's seen the voice of unbelief are you sure go to the back go to the back fast go to the back you must understand this these are the products of an encounter they will you're dealing with god then you know what to he will separate between personalized dealings and doctrines so every time you are teaching your personalized dealings you put a disclaimer this is to support your understanding not just to create a pathway are we together now papa ia deboe kneels down when he's about to preach it's not in the bible paul bows his knees to pray for the people but because of his work with god and a system he created by the wisdom of the spirit to acknowledge god it is all right if you have the revelation for it but there are many people as they are kneeling down you know that this person is just doing nonsense sometimes they don't even pray they just kneel down and rest their head and stand up to fulfill the ritual everybody say patterns you must know god for yourself i can tell you not only when an anointing comes to the place but what anointing and it will not always be by visions these are things that cannot exactly be taught they were products of the secret place i was trained by the spirit to recognize anointings i can know what anointing is in a place it's not everything you say that you see i remember the first time i started seeing angels please listen i didn't see angelic beings i started seeing like you know how a ribbon is you know how you know how children play with ribbons this is what i was seeing i didn't even understand what i was seeing until i stayed in the secret place and then i remembered that angels move in the similitude of light and then god started helping me even before i started seeing angels read but today there's a lot of lies people say i'm seeing an angel standing they are even saying jesus is standing here jesus you go and read your bible and see what happened to men when they saw him in his glory nobody saw jesus in his glory and just stood like that laughing no. let me tell you if an angel appears here or any spirit being if one eye can see it that doorway that interface that has been created must create a reaction the rest may not see but they will know something has happened look at paul saul of tarsus the moment jesus appeared he was the only one seeing him the rest just found out they were falling what in the world is going on here because that pattern is not there we have to invent lies lie word of knowledge lie prophecy lie anything because we have been taught that once you can prophesy ministry will be lucrative it's dangerous everybody say encounters you must know god for yourself that when you stand and tell people god will bless you you know the god you are talking about and the fact that he can bless you listen the god of abraham isaac jacob must become your god there is a name that your experience must give god that name is the dimension he will flow with in your ministry you hear kenneth copeland when he's ministering he can just turn and say yes sir i'm hearing you sir as if he's talking to his friend is his way of knowing god and that encounter that he's had with god are we learning something this morning this is very important so we need a revelation of an encounter with who god is ministry can be extremely distracting it is your knowledge of god that keeps you in focus do you know you can succeed in ministry as an art the same way you become a tailor 
the same way you become a a chef you can become a minister a preacher a dispenser of teachings and there is no life there is no power unfortunately members have enough discernment to know whether you are connected to life while you speak at first it will start like a dissatisfaction the wedding in cana and the wine finished preaching is still going on and somehow that life the life giving factor in your communication that is is only obtainable in the secret place is not there while you teach truth so you find out that what you are teaching is true but the corresponding transformation is not coming ask anyone you know who is close to me i don't sit down preparing sermons just by saying no i think this is nice um first corinthians this i think they would like to hear this wow this is wonderful brilliant amazing i mean this and that and that i've been preaching for a while and let me tell you sincerely it is possible for me to sit down and not open my bible and not study and except god reveals to you by word of knowledge you will not know like I said, it's an art. When you have been opening a book a long time, you are not too dull. Some scripture would have been in your head. Just because what you are saying is correct does not mean it is anointed. Encounters. Encounters. You must make room for God in your life if you want to be effective as a man of God. Listen to me we have a space pastor for our cars even if you have 10 cars you put a garage for them we have a storehouse where we keep food we have a place for our jewelries ladies jewelries no matter how small the room is there is a small box or something we have where we hide money even if it is in a pit somewhere but there is no space for god in our lives and our environment we smuggle him through any way and say god you just manage it and he looks at the space you have for your car he looks at the space you have for your clothes and he says where is my own place where is my own place ministry is an overflow of your secret place ministry true ministry is an overflow of your experience with god in Impactful ministry is an overflow of your experience with God. Listen, ministry is not teaching necessarily, not preaching necessarily, not just healing the sick necessarily, but the transformation that can come to a people and a territory on account of your knowing God and your understanding His ways. This is ministry every other channel they are just platforms they are support systems the life giving part of ministry is your knowledge of god there are men of god who can be so busy one meeting here one leadership meeting here and there you are concentrating on the support structures we'll talk about that a little but i need the the epicenter the pivotal point of a ministry it's a man's knowing God. So I know you are preparing for ministry. Not just because you are buying banners and suits. Not even when you are painting your office and putting a chair. I know you are preparing for ministry. To the degree to which your hunger and your passion for God is growing. I look at your secret place and I know the efficiency that will come from ministry. Let me tell you why this is powerful. Our generation is unforgiving about mediocrity. If they give a chance to hear God from you and you mess up, it will take mercy to bring you back to that stage. There are too many alternatives today. Gone are the days where you have only one voice and they have to make do with that voice. Right now, the moment you don't dispense truth, there are scattered around the entire globe are people who are serious with God. His presence the gift and the blessing that comes from knowing him his power that comes from a relationship you know I, I shared with you um, my story you may have heard me say it one time where I used to stay uh, in the quarters a, a few years ago 
um, I have this neighbor here and there he's also involved in um, uh, what do I call it now it may not be fair to call him a herbalist would I say he's a herbalist but he does well you, you know what I'm talking about isn't it yes and he believes he helps people with it you know and he has helped people he told me his whole track record that he goes to Lagos and does all of that and so when I came to stay there things started really going bad for him because nobody was coming there again and then one night this is true he just came and just knocked on my door and I came out and in a very personal way he said look you know the way his life is going now Kai this thing is not really working and he was talking to me whether there was a a possibility for collaboration and there was a way I could like lend him whatever I was using it's true it's very true and so I laughed I told him I said sir I understand he said his own is a gift they inherited it from their own father so it's not some he's not a bad man let me he's one of the nicest men I know till date he's a wonderful man so I'm not talking of um, um, an evil man in terms of maybe character no he's a sincere person and I told him I said in this life in this faith walk the power you get is not something that is in your hand independent of God it comes from a relationship it's like an intercourse where the woman's pregnancy is dependent on her meeting her husband are you getting what I'm saying now you can go to a herbalist and collect power and don't even know his name I came because I'm in trouble he says do you have the goat the black goat is here what else here and gives you the charm and you leave but that's not the way it is with God when you come and say God give me your hand he said take my heart first it starts with my heart you find my hand in my heart very important whatever has the possibility of destroying listen destroying your love your hunger your passion for more of God you have to trust God for grace to create a system around it and throw it out of your life are you getting what I'm saying it's powerful the most destructive things that can kill a man of God are not evil things they are good things evil things you can easily detect and run back pride lost you can run back to the secret place but money accolades you will read the scripture and say this is what should happen to a man when you are serious so you will believe god is working and you will not grow satan will always use something good to destroy you he will seldom use something evil it will be too noticeable everybody say encounters very powerful god bless you pastor from your encounter will also come your message the message or your mandate please write it down to make sustainable impact in a territory in a generation you must have what we call the message not a message you can have messages you can have sermons but what is the message every great man i know no matter how vast in spiritual truths has a central theme that represents the communication of what god has granted him access to see to know and to communicate to a generation are we together now pastor fred was saying something very instructive when he came here it truly is important you see the best of any minister is only an effective minister there is no how you can see all of God from one standpoint so he distributed his dimensions across the body and no matter how effective you are no matter how vast you are in knowledge you will have to be compelled by the spirit to stay and understand God in a dimension when you mention Joshua Selman you don't think relationship and marriage and this. no doesn't mean i don't know anything about it but i'm not an expert it's a waste of time if you invite me there somebody will be shouting while i'm saying let us pray and that's not what you plan for people are sitting in a round table with jews and not have you ever seen anyone invite me for a valentine talk no 
Does that mean I don't know what to say about relationship and marriage? You will be joking. When you are sick and you are lost, Benihin comes. When you are weak and there's no faith working in you, Kenneth Copeland comes. Are we together now? When there are all sorts of oppressions in your life, Dr. D.K. Olukoya comes. When your life is scattered and you need mercy fast, Papa Kumui will come with one message. How many? One. One message you will hear. You won't know whether to stand or to sit down or to lie down. Listen, nobody rewards you until you brand your impact constructively. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Impact cannot be haphazard. You must brand it with the unique dimension of God committed to you. I should be able to, did you look at all the men of God that came here right from yesterday? You can almost speak the unique grace, the unique operation. Everybody said the message. The message represents why you exist as a ministry. You must have the message. What did God send you to do? He sent me to preach the gospel. No, that's not your message. That's the great commission. It wasn't given to you. It was given to all of us. Or a robot said every time he would say this my assignment is to take the healing power of jesus to the nations and the pattern for dispensing it is by laying on of hands even if you were ten thousand he will not pray like benny Hinn and then take testimonies he will lay hands one by one that's why he succeeded he was one time the greatest healing evangelist in the united states tl osborne was granted that grace to communicate a message his entire ministry was centered around the message of the saving the healing and the delivering power of jesus when you listen to samadayemi even if samadayemi holds a business i mean a, a healing service in that healing service he must mention value that the power of god has come to give you value Oh, his, his lingua franca will betray him. It will rebrand him back. You are not ready to be honored when there is confusion as to what you represent to the body. So you must have a message. It must be clear. The Bible says, write the vision. Make it plain so that he will run that reads it these are very simple truths but you need to understand this the message a flourishing and an impactful ministry must have a message hill song many of you know hill song because of their music they are not just singers they have an exact message and the message is to see jesus glorified as simple as that all their songs are centered around the cross and the finished work of christ that's all they sing about don muen listen to him very carefully don muen the entire scope of his music ministry is not just to reveal jesus but also to communicate hope and life you listen to his songs he never sleeps he never slumbers so that among the many artists we have when you really need hope you know who to go to it's very important the message number two the second ingredient that will make a sustainable ministry is a strong leadership and an organizational structure now please pay attention we started well by talking about our knowledge of god our encounter from which comes the message from which comes the pattern from which comes our convictions as powerful as all that i just said is if you do not have a strong leadership structure well structured with clear tasks and expectations you may fail this i believe 
is where I will want to take a pause and honor so many ministries that have poured into my life in this area, especially the house on the rock. Truly speaking, I honor them for this one thing. Because based on my background, there was no, there was no system to stimulate leadership and excellence. Are we together now? Yes. But as God began to grant me access to truths and quality relationships, he began to help me to see the need for effective leadership. When it was time for people to eat bread, Jesus said, let the people sit down in 50s. Why? Because if you have a crowd of 5,000 people and everybody tries to collect that bread, they will kill you and kill the Messiah if they can and eat the bread. If there is no order, one person's appetite will eat one basket. They sat down and wastage was minimized. It's important. You cannot just allow anything to happen from and by everybody in ministry. No, there has to be a system. Spiritual people have this problem. Anointed men and women of God are some of the most disorganized people as ministers. Why? Because of the excellency. You know, when you truly are anointed and you have a message, people will forgive every other thing and just endure. But it doesn't mean they were designed to be that way. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? Leadership. To the extent that the secret to scattering the sheep is not to chase them. It's just to strike the shepherd. That's all. When God wants to destroy, I mean the devil wants to destroy a sheep, he does something to the shepherd and that's it. Moses was weary, leading about 2.5 million people. He was tired, he was fagged out, and he went and was frustrated. And Jethro, his father-in-law, came to him and said, Mister, you are going to weary yourself. Everything you are involved in, you are a human being. He said, set captains over thousands, over hundreds, over fifties, and he created that leadership structure. Let them be the ones to handle some of the issues. In the early church, there was a very intelligent organogram where the apostles were not allowed to be involved in matters of tables. When the Christian women, remember, and the, the women began to fight, in every organization once a crowd is more than 12 get ready the humanity of men will play it is leadership that will solve it not prayer for as long as there are one two three four five six seven it is possible for dr emeka to hit me unknowingly who do i report to there is nobody i report to myself and i react back by saying mr man the next time you hold me i will kill you and he will prove to me that he's a doctor you see that chaos and anarchy many times we forget that we are spiritual but we are also human leadership was designed to manage the humanity of men i hope you know divorce now i'm not talking about marriage and i don't want to talk about a very touchy area but i'm saying that was the extent of moses's leadership he found out that things were happening he could not understand and he said lord please permit me i'm going to have to invent a strategy because in this camp of 2.5 million some people have been beating their wives in a way that i don't think my conscience will allow and then god said okay in that case let there be a certificate that will mean that the people have been separated it was not god's original idea but for the sake of peace and organization moses had to invent a strategy leadership is very powerful it makes ministry easy leadership helps you to identify what is wrong you can't blame everybody for one person's mistake if the sounds go off i can not begin to quarrel you and say sam why did the sound go off that's none of his business are you seeing that now When Achan carried part of the treasures in Jericho that should not be carried, 
there was a system of isolating them from tribe to clan until it came to his family it would have been unfair to punish everybody but leadership provided an opportunity to isolate where the trouble was to deal with it when there is no leadership you will blame you will sabotage the creativity and the effort of others because of one person's mistake there has to be clearly defined tasks and expectations let me tell you this never provide an office when there is no need for it whether it's in an organization or it is in ministry do not create an office when there is no need for it human beings cannot stand being idle and they will find something to do a church of say 100 people should not be having pro1 pro2 vice president admin vice president this vice president that the work can effectively be done by two or three people the other seven or ten people will have to look for a way to be relevant is intrinsic in the human to feel that he's making progress and they will have to invent assignments or tamper with other job descriptions for a long time there was no public relations department in this ministry the protocol department was doing the work of five departments because we had not seen a need to create it as god began to bless the ministry the need came and now we had to carve out a department that responds and represents our presence to the international community very very important there is something called due season for things and by the time you create leadership structures that is not yet the season for them you are going to cause a lot of trouble chaos and anarchy if you're with me please say amen, amen. well structured with clear tasks and expectations let me give you an advice that i learned following a pastor's conference i think it's a very instructive advice allow for creativity but never without supervision you cannot indefinitely allow people to be creative and just to continue to invent strategies without supervision because their creativity will stretch them sometimes to go out of the pattern given to you by god so it is good that people become and remain creative but that their creativity must be within the jurisdiction of the the order that was given to you if you allow people there are things they will do that will get to a point where god will ask you who sent you in this ministry for instance i'm someone who is very comfortable to allow our precious people and they know i love them with all my heart to be able to come up with their ways i don't unnecessarily interrupt there is a level of autonomy within the various departments but never without supervision you don't invent an idea and execute it like that no everybody say leadership this is very very important number three The third key that is responsible for making sustainable impact in ministry is to understand your execution strategy now these things i'm teaching are very powerful they are not my opinions necessarily they are truths that i've gleaned from ministries that have worked based on god's standard and even by the standard of success i've had the privilege by the grace of god to study the largest and most impactful churches in every continent execution strategy that means the strategies you put in place that will allow that vision to come to pass there are three things under this number one 
your execution strategy is what will invent the activities of the ministry within that season every activity should not be receivable just because a church is doing it a man of god is doing it does not just mean you just ship it and bring it no your programs the subdivisions of the ministry and the various activities in the ministry they come from your execution strategy how god said to do what you should do you see for instance in the miracle service we we didn't start submitting prayer requests eventually god gave me this and said it's an opportunity to be able to pray for the people so every miracle service we collect the request representing the pain of the people and we cry before the lord here and you can tell the testimonies that have come out of it almost every worker if not every worker in this ministry knows the subdivisions of the ministry they are not a secret both the ones for the future and now it is very clear there is an exact leadership organogram that defines the various subdivisions of the ministry these are the platforms through which the purposes of god as committed to us will be executed everybody say execution strategy you need it in business you need it in 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 your organization not just church under execution strategy again is your culture and ethics your culture and your ethics make part of your execution strategy how do you behave what is the modus operandi of the ministry in as much as we frown at tradition in as much as we frown at religion no organization becomes impactful until their impact is systematized are we together i have had the privilege to visit um the churches of all the men of god represented here and for every one of the churches there is a culture there is an ethic i humorously say it you don't find someone in koinonia just because i'm teaching and he's touched he will not just sit down with one thousand naira and hold it from where he is and just throw it and say let it get to the altar no it's not a culture it's not the way it's not the blueprint that god has given to us are we together don't i hope i hope you are not you're understanding what i'm saying it's very important when you go to the bank they have a system of working they have their work ethics they greet you and smile tired or not it's a system they are paid to do it If something falls on the ground now not everybody will come to pick it are we together now there is a system for picking it there is a department whose jurisdiction also make for remedying this kind of thing most people do not have a culture they do not have ethics let me tell you this culture and an ethic is a system of standardization that means everywhere koinonia service is held there should be an expected behavior there should be an expected pattern i have seen ministries look at this i have seen ministries where a whole service is like 10 churches in one now you would think nothing is wrong with that the guy who does the opening prayer invents his way of doing it and he does it maybe the way he saw somebody who mentored him the guy taking the praise and worship can choose to just do something and say pastor come up me and pastor we're going to dance are you seeing that now he thinks it's supposed to be a very nice thing he say you you must dance or someone can come up and sing worship and because he's taught say, everybody kneel down everybody in the whole church kneel down his presence is here you see those kinds of things destroy your you are anointed but you may never go far you will know you are wrong when you start a tv ministry when there is an angry person from one nation who will write you 
and tell the government ban this man he's, he's communicating wrong values to the people a culture there has to be a way of working is someone learning this now you systematize your impact when you have a culture train your workers train your workers give them the flexibility to be creative but you must train them when you are coming to perform a function what is the protocol for what you are doing if you are in house on the rock many of you have been there you would notice they have a system for collecting their offerings for praying for all of this based on the blueprint that was given beautiful system saves time the moment you give offering you pass it to the priest on the aisle and he stands and the ushers just walk pick it up and it's done there are churches their own pattern now regardless of efficiency their pattern is you first go outside are we together and then you give whatever key is comfortable to the music director and then you begin to dance you are liberty to choose how fast or how slow you want to dance and one person would dance and go back and dance and go back and listen listen i hope you are getting what i'm teaching you there are many things we do that at a localized platform they can forbear it but if you want to be global you must adjust not violate your convictions but you must be able to adjust to minister to people what kind of songs should you sing you can't leave everybody to his creativity to just raise any song and say i just had a song this morning and i really like it you will learn it now say this and that and that song may not be compliant with the values as revealed by god to the ministry are we together ethics how do you behave when wealthy people come into that church how do you behave when politicians come what is the system of receiving them what is the system of welcoming them you don't wait till they come then you start thinking what do we do with this guy now no if if the governor of this state or if someone now is going to come what is the system if you don't learn this god cannot bring influential people under your care if someone comes to testify up here and says god bless me i have a job i mean i have created jobs right now i have the power in fact i'm thinking about it between now and next month i'm even looking for about 300 people to give them jobs what do you think will happen to those who are not employed they will wait for him after service they've already come with their cv for prayer so straight they will just go outside and we lay that person and others may find his address and just come and knock many pastors have refused to come back to certain churches because of what the members did after the service they follow them to their house and say sorry i'm not don't be offended i i just i don't know if you can help me zip my house sir. the way god has blessed you no culture no ethic i'm going to share something and please pastor stand up pastor dan don't be embarrassed yesterday after the meeting the protocol came and met me they packed all kinds of um some i think it was a gift or so they brought for him and the wife and then they gave him and said kai you blessed me take sir he refused to collect it he said give the protocol i am here to learn i am here to grow and when the protocol met me i looked i said oh what a wise man i said whatever we can add to this and bless it let us give him and honor him you see that a man of god that is in discipline can come to another man's house listen very carefully i went to a particular church and a young man gave me a car i said no 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 i'm not collecting this car go and give the car to your pastor and bless him when he went to the pastor and said sir god spoke to me to give apostle this the pastor called me and said apostle this gentleman is serious he wants to bless you with the car i said well whatever it is are you in agreement with this sir culture anytime i go to a ministry and i want to do anything that i believe or i know is not the usual practice 
i will usually seek for permission from the man of god or if i can come stand with him these are things that you have to learn it's not all about anointing 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 there are systems the first system of recovery for a mighty army was the coming back of the skeletons the structure are we together just like pastor fred shared when you enter a man's house listen no matter how great you are if you are in someone else's house you have to work with their system if they remove their shoes outside take off your shoes i remember the time i went to minister in cherubim and seraphim i was invited to minister there and they were all happy that i was coming and i blessed god for it as soon as i got there you know our dear people there said no 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 apostle enter with your shoes i said why why should i enter with my shoes i took off my shoes because that is the protocol i learned this from dr modok protocol is important adaptation is proof of honor when you come to a ministry don't come at your terms have the flexibility to bend to the practice I never come to a church and then I'm just excited because of my relationship with the pastor. I just get up, I hold the mic, I say, God wants to move, choir just, and mm -mm. you sit down and wait for your time. If they call you to take offering, don't give word of knowledge. Let us pray. Father, we bless you for this and that and that. When you finish, God bless you. That's it. Pray for children. Don't start talking about marriage and pregnancy. Pray for children and leave that place. As the Lord has granted me grace to minister in certain platforms, I'm seeing the strictness of complying with these principles. Because here there are people that can be a bit free. But in those places, there are people who have earned the right to be offended when you violate their privacy in the name of spirituality. Is someone learning something? Execution. You must know how to behave and how to function within any organization you must know and you must create a system that way how do they reach you if i want to invite you now and i don't have a relationship with you what is the system to reach you many ministries do not have official lines there's no system of reaching them if you are starting you can use your line for many years i handled my ministrations invitations myself because i didn't see a need to have all of that as as time went and i couldn't handle it again i transferred the responsibility to the protocol department there must be a culture and there must be an ethic are we together the third under execution strategy is priorities Please don't be tired of what I'm teaching you. We are soon going to pray. If you truly want to be effective, if you came here this morning, it's not just for prayer and impartation. It's to know the ways of God and to excel. These are the inner working systems that make for efficiency. Priorities. That means your focus and your emphasis for the now. It's not everything God gave you that you can do now. There are things God will tell you that is for 10 years. Koinonia is going to have a TV ministry. We are going to have schools. We are going to have all kinds of things. But for now, for now, this is the assignment allocated for now. And so we restrict ourselves. Listen, the resources that God will give you will always be sufficient for your program for now. There are many ministries that do not have priorities and focus. A ministry just starts and in one year, you may be holding five conferences. You may do very well except for the fact that the ministry finance may never rise. The entire collection for that ministry in a year at that level may be maybe five million. And now you are organizing a program and you are bringing two men of God from the U.S., and the two will come with their keyboardists they will come with other people the man himself will fly first class you see that 
and the PA, he can decide and call you and say, my son has been crying that he needs to see Nigeria. You know what that means. Once a baby can walk, he's a passenger. Full payments like the adult. Now you pay all of that and you continue to stretch members. Are you seeing what makes many members run away from the church? The program will be powerful, but in the end of it, it's always on deficit. Always on deficit. You cannot build and you cannot grow that way. Some guys one day, I think it was last year, very nice group of friends that started to pray and they really believed that they were praying for a revival to come to their land. And they sent a text. They said, Apostle, we need you in this land and we are going to bring you silver and gold we don't have but what we have just just stop this there don't don't make a fool out of yourselves there are many anointed men of god in that region they will ignore them because they think they are not anointed you see that there is is there is somebody at your level that can serve the purposes of god have the humility to enjoy that grace and grow as time and wealth and wisdom allows even as i am now as a man of God, I know my boundaries. Spiritually, financially, sociologically. I will be stupid to do certain things and engage certain things. Faith is not foolishness. You must know your boundary and respectfully stay there. I will not get up right now and then go to Portacourt or go anywhere and say I'm doing a city-wide crusade. Or go to the US and say everybody come and fill this stadium. It's called vain glory. You must get to a point where you know that God has tried for me, but I'm still growing. Are we together? There are many times during our leaders' meeting, you know, we can share a few things that we want to execute. And many times my people will just hear me keep quiet over the issue. Once I shelve an issue, they know that's it, leave it there. It's very, very important. Priorities. What do we do now? God, these are all the things you have said we'll do. But which do we start with first? What do we do now? So number one is an encounter that births your message, your convictions, your patterns. Number two, strong leadership that makes your impact systemic. Three, an execution strategy that defines your activities defines your culture and ethics defines your priorities number the fourth one is your system of reach I call it your marketing a system of marketing and reach now please listen because many of us men of God are trusting God for increased membership we are trusting God to honor us with more and more people. There is a strategy. Growth does not just happen like that. There are forces that must be engaged for growth to happen. Your marketing and reach. What does that mean? How do you let your world know you are there? The people will not come when they do not know you are there. The Bible says, and it was noised abroad. That Jesus was in town and it was noised abroad the Lord gave the word he said great is the company of them that published it this is very important please listen no ministry will excel and thrive in today's world if you do not have an intentional system for your reach and your marketing this includes business The first way that you reach people. Now let me talk about ministry. I'm focusing this on ministry. I apologize for other, you know, um, other areas of purpose. The most effective way I know to really draw people 
is the power of results genuine results genuine results everybody say genuine results please say it say it. don't sleep say genuine results mm. two interesting people in scripture and the way they marketed jesus please sit down sir i'm sorry he's been standing all through i'm sorry sir look up please everyone once upon a time there was a madman in a city called gadara that madman was hidden in caves they would tie him and he would hurt himself and jesus crosses to the other side and the first person he meets is that madman after a conversation with him the madman is delivered are we together now and commotion is in the town because people lose immediately those who who own the pigs they just lost and there was all kinds of things this man the bible said because of the impact of what happened he went and gathered 10 cities how many cities imagine that one striking work of the kingdom upon your life gathering people let me tell you there are people who they are more than a microphone everybody knows about their challenges and their predicaments and when god touches them it becomes too notable people will always come to find out who did this testimonies are attractive they have a magnetic property they can draw men how did the scribes know that jesus would be in this city and you'll be having a program notice the scribes never sat outside they were always early for the meeting they followed the ministry of jesus followed the details they would hear that god did this today tomorrow he did this tomorrow he did that this is where i will want to bring a little balance there is no other means of marketing and reach that will be more effective than a transformed life please listen to me the greatest way to invite people is to transform those you have you are not going to pray for more people to come and join the pile of lack of transformation change the people the greatest testimony that that really blesses me in ministry it's not that the sick were healed sincerely thank god for that it's not that this and that happened people receive this but when people say my life changed i listened to the message something happened i got to know the holy spirit i became a leader that's transformation this is why you see ministries like that of joyce mayer joel austin you may not see them do physical miracles and so because of that you may think that they are not doing anything until you see the systems that are intentionally transforming people some of them have tv stations in prisons some of them design the programs that the prisons use and so the endorsement of the government has made them a voice this is influence i've told you that the kingdom advances in two ways primarily number one is evangelism number two is influence the second was the woman at the well jesus comes to meet this woman at the well and her life was in shambles many husbands and then jesus began to speak with her when he was done speaking with her he didn't even ask her go and publicize she ran and said come see a man this is how people come to our churches listen they will not say don't you know apostle joshua selman they say come see a man when the people come and encounter you and your god then they will go back and say now we believe not because you told us we have seen for ourselves let people not be invited and come to your church and say where is the man the service is over what did you invite me for what was your proposition what did you say would happen to me you told me if i came i would hear the word of god you told me if i came the worship would lift me you told me if i came i would see excellence i'm here now 
the grace is about to be shared i didn't see any of those things now that person will go back and still publicize but against your impact you say make sure that any day you see this man please don't waste your time there's nothing happening there do not ignore the referrals and the endorsement of transformed men do not ignore it this is one of the ways that god by his spirit has built this ministry for himself transformed lives you cannot deny transformation you may say a miracle is fake a breakthrough is fake a prophetic word is fake this is just psychology but how do you explain a transformed life are we together i was blind now i see i was wrong now i'm right i was in darkness now i'm in the light i was poor now i'm blessed this is the kingdom alongside the results and the testimonies that they bring pay attention to your media ministry media ministry do not ignore it son of man what seest thou and he said a flying scroll he was seeing the power of technology a scroll that can fly it's a scroll that contains information but it's not limited to a localized environment it can fly to regions the media ministry is powerful look what the social media is doing that someone can actually sit down from one spot is a system that has broken down it has manifested omnipresence that i can be here and yet i can be there zuckerberg is in his house but he's in your phone he's in your heart he's in your life he's in your mind he's in your decisions he forced himself into your values you cannot plan without him he didn't ask you he forced his way there you can institutionalize your impact such that any generation that ignores god through you will pay for it whoever ignored jesus paid for it whoever ignored elijah paid for it whoever ignored moses paid for it the media ministry is powerful brand your content to reflect your values brand your content to reflect your values very important media is powerful there are many nations that i have not been to that today have been so marvelously blessed by what god is doing here it is the power of the internet it is the power of the media it's very important a disclaimer though you must have strong spiritual and emotional strength to explore the tool of the media because you see let me teach you something dear men of god an average man of god is already used to lavish celebration by the people within his circle nobody may have the right whether they agree with you or not they may not have the courage to confront you and say i don't like you welcome to the world where the, there are audacious men and women you can make one statement and your members are clapping and somebody comes and says for two weeks let's analyze the nonsense this preacher has said and someone will be saying that's my man of god he said that may be your man of god but that's my foolish man who i'm correcting if you don't have the emotional stamina listen to me because many christians are strong spiritually but we are weak emotionally they said this about me and it destabilizes you then do not be global it's a risk you are not authorized to be global as a ministry and as a man of god if you do not have the fortitude to stand disagreement to stand persecution do not fear being controversial provided you have convictions they talk about jesus and they talk about satan no matter how far you go it will be in between two of them your jesus is the one someone can paint on facebook 
have you seen different kinds of caricatures of jesus your jesus that we go to jerusalem and roll on the floor for and the people are just watching these madmen i thought they were here for tourism my jesus this is where you died this is your tomb they say this is not the real tomb they say this is the one that i <laughs> don't be offended when someone has no regard for your values men are just men this is a powerful advice i'm giving you when i started out in ministry let me tell you something and an is here he will testify i'm not somebody that i am a i'm a man of peace i honestly don't like trouble so if it means me lying down here for peace to reign i don't like controversy and i don't like trouble and that time i used to wear myself out i would pray and just spend time with god at about one or two when i now want to go and rest someone will now call me and say apostle then there was a place i used to meet in in the campus there are you at so 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 place i said no, i want to go and sleep and then they now blackmail me and say didn't you say god sent you for us I, i'm having pains i want to see you and you are complaining and i feel bad i just go back and say lord this is for your glory <laughs> let me tell you something about men you will never satisfy their desires you do not have that ability the same thing that will put a crown on the head of another is what another person will advocate that you take off if you do not sustain emotional intelligence you will break down nobody wants to hear anything negative about himself if if i produce this and you hold it and say but this is dirty you mean pastor Alpha, this is all you could do as brilliant as you are whereas while you are saying it this person is on his knees collecting it many of you here looking at me you want fame but without the cross that comes with fame there is a huge cross you think it's everybody that likes me are you joking you think it's everybody that believes in me are you joking you think it's everybody that respects me are you joking have you not seen people insult papa Ia Deboe? have you not seen people insult kenneth hagin one time i stumbled across a video material that wrote down the name of almost every known man of god and just captioned it that they are all going to hell i said ah these are the guys that have taught the whole body of christ so if they are all going to hell let's find out quickly so that we can because you can't dodge any of them i mean these guys just carried the body of christ and said the church is going to hell convictions do you have the stamina to be controversial because every great vision is first fought before it is honored it is the price for renaissance is the price for a revolution is the price for doing something different ask the fathers when women began to preach in the church it was war when the power of god began to move i remember a man of god i went to minister in his church and he was telling me about his state he said those days if someone falls under the anointing they can almost go and lock you up he said when the power of god started moving in and through his ministry it was strange they said he was diabolic he was devilish and all of that how will you feel if someone came for your service and while everybody was kneeling down they were just looking at you like this Say, is this what you call a man of God? This is what you call church? Shame on you. And you go back and say, God, they said shame on me. God will say, go and find out what they said about me. <laughs> Let, let's keep going. How many of you precious sisters, they see you walk around. Oh, this lady, no earrings. Oh, this lady, head tie all the time. And you feel bad. And you are standing. Because some persons who have their values don't want to keep their values and come to destroy your confidence bending to become like people will break you because you will have to bend to every direction and your body cannot bend to every direction somebody will say sing traditionals alone we are africans 
you will dance and somebody say no that dance is is a demonic dance you are doing traditional and you are dancing did you see the way that lady was no 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 the way that lady is dancing with the brothers their mind will not be focused on the cross now you go back to sing hymns and someone will, you know listen be guided by the fear of the lord by conscience and by posterity nothing more you live to please everybody you have trouble god made the work easy focus on him he's the only one who will mark the script everybody is a student the best student in a class will still be assessed so don't let the ignorance of people around just come and challenge you are we blessed i just digressed a bit we're going to pray to teach you this let me tell you sincerely and i submit to you uneasy lies the crown the the head that wears the crown it looks glorious when you see great people and great ministers sit on the throne but let me tell you ask every man of god here if you say a conference is coming you can tell them sir i saw a vision it is done the bills are not there ultimately it's that man's faith that is going to stretch you come and say pastor just to reassure you the conference must happen except god didn't give me the revelation you had the revelation this is the man that is going to produce the finances by faith that's why you see depressed preachers everywhere sisters that's why many of you are afraid of marrying men of god when you weigh the trouble and weigh this you just say kai mm. <laughs> that's the price for glory my dear people living in a world where everybody loves you that world is a dream that world is a big dream do you have the stamina to be controversial and yet focused and yet determined there are times that i go to minister and i thank god for the honor sometimes right from the airport you know sometimes people have bands that play sometimes they have some dignitaries that they bring to welcome me and i just come down and i see people who don't know me and you just see the anger who is the guy this is him apostle so what i put coin on here i mean you see the anger this guy and i say what is it my fault what, did i stop you from rising i mean look at look you see how people are there are many times people talk about my coming in many regions they hype it apostle is coming your life i'm telling you just come i can discern i'm a spiritual man as soon as i enter people are jumping sometimes you can see through the crowd what is this what is this generation becoming just because a man entered jesus entered you didn't clap now a man is you know and then i just laugh it over and i love them when i come up to preach usually sometimes they are standing oh yeah let's see what he's saying that is unusual what has he said that kenneth Hagin has not said what has he let's see it. Many times, usually when I start talking, five, ten minutes, they start softening up a little. They just look at nod, then later they do like they want to open the notebook. They open it a little. And then later on, they're like, ah, this, I mean, this is. <laughs> Pastor, when they persecute you, it's not unusual. It's not always because you are wrong sometimes it's because you are right your assignment is to help even your persecutors so accommodate their ignorance while they change that's what makes you a leader the ability to see the more superior version of themselves hmm. i'm blessed by my own teaching here already the last The last 
secret to sustainable impact is the availability of financial resources please write it down this is a minister's conference and i'm just hoping and praying that god truly added value this morning to someone's life finance please look up pastors you will bear me witness and every man of god here will tell you whoever ignores the place of financial resources in kingdom advance will pay for it and pay for it again and again you see come down. when you start out in ministry you don't really need finances usually you meet at one corner under a tree somewhere all you are concerned about is the power of god falls on you you teach you don't need a mic you don't need anything so your focus will be on jesus your growth and all of that but now you get to a point where leadership where administration and other things begin to come in the financial burden of ministry can strangle your prayer life it can strangle your word life it can even strangle your values everybody say finance one of the questions that i ask the lord sincerely from the depth of my heart i learned this from pat robinson the founder of cbn 700 club he said when god called him to do ministry he asked god three things he said lord please give me three things number one wisdom number two favor number three the anointing of the holy spirit if you will give me these three i will go when i heard it i went back to god i said god i don't know if i'm going to ask you i've asked you before for your presence and now maybe let me ask first before i will find out later that i made a mistake please talk to me about the finance of this vision that you are showing me how is it going to come and where will it come from you see the way ministers have been attacked everywhere you call people to sow seeds the next thing someone is insulting you they, that is not the system of the world and of course i know that here and there people have exaggerated these things because there are bills to pay i don't want to tell you the weekly budget that runs this ministry it is not necessary but just believe me when i tell you you can run a conference with the weekly budget of this ministry and we're not even in our own place it's true the rentals the transportation the power and all the things that have to be put in place and yet you are supposed to be focused and loving that's why some men of god come up the stage you see the anger hallelujah i said hallelujah is it what part of amen can't you can't uh, you know that this this pain the person is not bad he's trying to say encourage me and you are refusing the holy ghost can use money to create joy You are pastors imagine that we came here right now and we told you there is no finance for tonight's meeting the communion alone for tomorrow if i tell you how much was spent on the communion just for tomorrow's miracle service you will be surprised you will ask yourself whether it's necessary or necessary must we take communion can't we just speak prophecy instead prophecy is cheaper just be blessed i mean what is there with coming it will not cost you anything for starters less than 25 million naira per month to float a television station how much per month not hd that's the channels you switch that you say please let's move to another channel that's what they paid did you hear what i said those channels that you see a lot of haze is it black is it white this is what they paid didn't satan pay men to say jesus is not lord 
as soon as he resurrected they called some people and said okay come let me tip you say jesus is not lord who will settle the words on the top and satan is still using money today if the church of the lord jesus christ is not empowered in these end times my brothers and my sisters please listen to me this is not about an addiction to money this is money just like the anointing tools for kingdom advance it is important some of our visitors we just got news that because of i think the convocation or so i didn't even know there was convocation happening on on saturday and now they just passed a directive that you know all our people there they should evacuate them from the um the the hotels that belong you know that we lodge them there can you imagine that just like that get out out we have visitors coming you and your money get out now imagine if i come and whisper and say reverend Bandoma, pastor fred please we need five hundred thousand this night now can you find a way if i do it directly to pinch me so find a way no. money can help you have integrity oh let me tell you this it's true it's true financial resources are important provided they are kept within the jurisdiction of their relevance they work wonders we need heavy financial resources the gospel is free but the means to take it to the lost is very expensive the vehicle that carries the gospel is heavy every church thank you and that includes businesses please listen we're going to pray must have i've stated this before but number one must have a strategy for income generation now the bible is very clear as to how financial resources should come into the church the bible allows for tithes allows for offerings and all kinds of givings and partnership the bible allows that provided the resources are used with integrity and truthfulness but because of the peculiarity of our world today if all you do is depend on tithes and offering you will only run church services you can't run projects i've i've been i've been to the churches of all my dear friends and i've seen the projects that they are doing and many of you may not know but with all humility and to the glory of god we acquired a property recently and um i may not tell you how much that is but i can only give you an idea 36 plots of land now listen it was paid cash without raising any even the leaders didn't even know so that when we come to church we can serve god in truth and in spirit and not just to come and say people we are going to have to do this i'm not saying it's wrong to challenge people don't trivialize it. Reverend Uban Doma shared here that there are people who have the grace for helps. Anybody that is a kingdom financier, your first assignment after knowing God is to be extremely wealthy. If you are not wealthy, you are wicked and you have failed. To supply for the resources and the blessings of heaven. I insist and I make sure that there's no financial pressure whatsoever on the workers and the leaders in this ministry that everything that has to do with committing seeds is done by revelation and truthfulness don't be angry when you see pastors manipulating people i don't endorse it but sometimes it's an expression of the pain they were mentored to trivialize finances and so they pursued the things of god sincerely so but now they found out that there is a level of financial capability you must have to excel a jimmy during the business session for those of you who were here he ran us through a lot of demands minus luxury pastors will tell you here the amount of an average man of god just on dressing just not luxury 
just undressing can build many houses. Are we together? Because a man of God cannot dress shabby and dress scattered. He's the same you that will say, what is this? This is not Jesus. When I started with the Lord, there was a year that God opened my eyes to the necessity of financing ministry. I remember when I switched and I said, believers, it's me that has been teaching you on purpose and the power of God and intimacy with the Holy Spirit and the kingdom. Now, in addition to that curriculum, God has introduced finance. Whoa. Whoa. I, had, I got the blow of my life. Apostle has backsliding. Jesus is Lord. What happened? Apostle, leaving all of these things to come to mundane things like finances. Now, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, don't hate anyone. Don't, don't. I'm like Joseph. Sometimes persecution is proof that you are really sent. You see the ignorance in the people. And you know if I don't manifest, they will remain like this. They are persecuting me is validating the fact that they are ignorant. I went to the Lord crying to him and said, God, what is all this? And the Lord told me, you can choose to listen to men or listen to me. I'm showing you the future. And I said, Lord, show me your ways, please. Let me not get to a point in ministry where I have to do what I shouldn't do because I'm looking for finance. Most members don't know that men of God have other things with their lives too. Who pays the school fees of that man of God's child? How do you run the church? By the privilege of God's grace. There are so many of our children here that we take care of. It's not something to blow a trumpet about. Not school fees. They are upkeep. There are people whose daily living is in the pocket of another person and that done effortlessly i have seen and i tell you by the privilege of god's mercy the advantage of financial resources maybe this is why some of you came for this conference it may be a pastor conference but you have done well in these other areas but you may have been the victim of this skirmish communication by the gates of hell that financial resources are not necessary change your mind Please change your mind the earlier the better so that you will not eat your children in the future and so that you will not sell your children to pay debt. The prophet, although a prophet, he died and left his children and one woman in debt. By the time you pastor families that are not doing well, you will find out that it is in the efficiency of the people that you are also blessed. Hallelujah. When God showed me this, I was grateful when I found the keys. Listen to me, my brothers and my sisters. Full-time ministry in today's world does not mean the absence of activating streams of income. It means full-hearted commitment. Hear what I'm telling you. The 21st century church, you need to adjust your understanding of full-time ministry. Full-time ministry does not mean throw away every opportunity to lift you. It means let your heart be committed full-time. Because if you ignore everything and say, me, I'm not, I'm not a businessman, I don't do anything. Let me tell you, hunger will always drive Israel to Egypt. It was hunger that drove Israel to Egypt. Like he's driving many of you right now. You love God. Until now you are beginning to teach things that you know should not be. If you must be outstanding in ministry, please make it a point of duty by the grace of God to conquer this finance thing. The same way you press for the anointing. The same way you press for revelation. Don't dichotomize them. And don't let the devil make you feel one is carnal. And No, they are all spiritual. 
what is carnal about money it takes the spirit for you to prosper the same way you press for character anointing revelation please add finance to the list as the tools together the body of jesus was hanging on the cross i've taught you no prayer warrior could bring that body down it took resources to bring the body who was the owner of the grave that jesus entered he came out from it and saved you but whose grave who donated his grave for prophecy to be fulfilled whose donkey did jesus climb if he was broke and he did not have a donkey there would be no triumphant entry he was born in a manger whose manger I will never pastor and lead the people who know God and don't know finances. They will know both. I believe in influence. I believe in the ease that kingdom understanding together with influence provides. Africa, do not mix Christianity and the depraved culture that our servitude, our pre- and post-colonial servitude has been interwoven with Christianity. We mix everything together and make doctrines out of them. Africa has largely been a territory of servitude. We have not understood leadership. We don't know influence. It's strange to our culture. And so in the dealings of God, we limit our understanding to submission, which is important. But we hate influence. And the principles that get us to the corridors of power, we hate and we fight. It's wonderful to fear God. It's wonderful to love God. But if you do not have an efficient leadership, you will not last. There will not be a system of building. The reason why this building is built because, is because one block allowed another to stay on it. If the block refuses and says, that's not how I am, you would not have a structure. Leadership. Number three, strategy. You have to execute systemically to build according to patterns. Number four is your reach. From Jerusalem, from Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth. He would have just said to the ends of the earth, but he broke them in levels. The way you sell Jesus in Jerusalem is not how you would do it in Judea. It's not how you would do it in, in Samaria. For every one of these regions and levels, there are strategies for your reach. And finally, finance. You need finance. It is one of the greatest tools. Do you know that in Europe today, Pastor, Islam is the fastest growing religion in Europe. They've never had one city-wide crusade. One. One. You know what they do? Agree to be gay and agree to be a Muslim will pay you through school. And they go back and say, Daddy, this is what they said. You say, I won't pay your school fees and you will not be a Muslim. You say, I've gotten the answer. Sir, where is the place to sign the signature? To be gay? Fine. To be a Muslim, fine. One of our dear ladies, I remember many years ago, she got born again. Her brother was still a Muslim. The father was still a Muslim. Then the brother got born again. Then eventually the father got born again. When the father got born again, pastor, true story, the wealthy people stashed money at the back of a car and drove from Kogi to Lagos. They said, what is wrong? Sit down. What happened? Is it that you lost in business? What happened? Because they believe if you come to Jesus, it is because you are frustrated and you are welcome. But then they are saying, I mean, how have you reduced yourself to give your life to Christ? What happened? The day she told me, I said, my God. They snatched the car with money and opened it. Please deny Jesus and have money to get your life back. Hear me. If Michael Jackson ever said Jesus, even by mistake, he would have won more souls. I am Michael Jackson. I love Jesus on his shirt. You will write your name too. I am Sam. I love. 
Even a wizard will say, I am a wizard. I need Jesus. That's the power of influence. Nobody asks you to wear what you wear. They made you wear it. They created a need and forced it. We can force a generation to see the relevance of Jesus. Not by poking it on people's eyes. But building correctly. The church must prosper. Please pastors hear me. Gone are the days where you tell people I'm a pastor and they pity you. They say so pastor Alpha, this is it. You went and got a lecturing job in University of Joss. And now with all that God has done, this is how you want to waste your life. Whoever said ministry was a cause. Whoever said serving Jesus is what people do when they are failed in life. And they don't know what else to do. They say, instead of wasting my life, at least let me serve in the vineyard. We must change that perception. In the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus is heavy. It takes finance to lift it up. We are mandated to lift it high. We raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. We sing in honor of you. We will raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. We sing in honor of you. Nada o kaka sunanka, o bengi chika isayabo. Nakir mama sunanka, Please hold hands with someone by your left and by your right. Micah chapter four, please. We are going to pray. Sila Maharusia Katabranda Gadusia. There is coming a generation that will defy this. There has to be a generation that will represent Christ properly. Micah chapter 4. But in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain, the influence of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of other stratas and influences and it shall be exalted above the hills and people shall flow to it next verse verse 2 and many nations how many many nations shall come say come and let us go up to the mountain of the lord and to the house of the god of jacob and he will teach us of his ways and we will walk in his paths for the Lord shall go forth from Zion and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem you see let me tell you every great move of God starts like a joke the kingdom of God is likened to a living it's a parable a living looks small and harmless until it sees the what they call it the dough you just mix a little of it and stand back and watch the power of that tiny thing you added. I remember those days when my mother would be making cake or something. I used to wonder that small thing. Just throw the thing there and just mix it and it begins to rise. That's what is happening. Something you are receiving. We are making noise and people are these are noise makers. They are just broke people consoling themselves. Uh -uh. The Lord himself is the captain of this army. God has gathered us from several places to tell you that whether or not in the fivefold ministry like Reverend Ubandoma shared or whatever dimension of kingdom service you must insist that Lord through you, my generation will know that Jesus is Lord. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray.
Balakata brande gede balarabos. Radesa de balanda segata pos. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I wish the minister's conference were to run for days. I would have taught you a lot of things. One of them is the ministry of men. You are not free until men come into your life. Please listen. We are going to pray. If you have money, you are not yet favored. You know you are favored when you have access to the hearts of men. True favor is not just money. True favor is men. And all that they have. I can give you money. Doesn't mean I love you. But when I give you my heart. With my heart is everything connected to me. Listen. Let me tell you this. I remember the first major financial miracle. That God brought to this ministry. Till tomorrow I don't know the person. It was like a joke. Because when they make transfers to the ministry. I get the alerts. And I saw an alert that almost brought me to my knees. I said, God, what is this? Who is this person? And they didn't even text to say, okay, I'm the one. I said, they should try to see if they can get me the person. And they couldn't. And I just said, this is it. Men. If you do not have men that lift your hands, you are going to fall in ministry. You may be Moses, but your hands will be tired. And you will need the hands that hold you. Financially, spiritually, giving you encouragement and love. You can't imagine how blessed I am hearing that pastor left Gombe. Gombe is very far. Zamfara, far. Reverend Ubanduma was here with his family. He's here again. One of my friends called me and said he's coming. And you know, this is not a standard conference. We didn't send any letter of invitation. I spotted different ministers here and there. Father, the mighty men that will hold my hands as I lift up your name. I draw them in this season. Lift your voice and pray. Favor with men. Favor with men. Favor with men. Favor with men, oh God. Alabarakatosa predekatesh, kalaba shanadas. Open the doors of favor with men. Hallelujah. Two more prayer points and we're done. When Jesus came to the fig tree, he expected to find fruits. He came because he was hungry. Not finding fruits, he cursed it. If he found fruit, he would have blessed it. If your life and your ministry does not produce extraordinary results, your life will be full of bitterness and hatred and anger and competition. This is what you see happening around the body of Christ. This one hating this one. This one fighting this one. This one getting angry. There is no need. When God invests a dimension of strange results in your life and ministry, by the teaching of truth and by the mighty works that come from your hands, you will be surprised to see the way the nations will flow. They will inconvenience themselves to honor Christ in your life. Father, give me results. 
real results results of salvation results of transformation results of miracles signs wonders breakthroughs is someone praying and evidence is the end of all argument a genuine result is the end of all argument you are in business cry give me results in business give my organization results consistent results Please pray, give me results. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. John the prophet is in the prison and he sends his disciples to question the messiahship of Jesus. He says, Go and ask him, Are you the Messiah or should we expect another? Jesus does not answer. He turns back and begins to heal the sick and cast out devils. He said, go and tell John what you have seen. Go and tell him what are the signs of the Messiah. Ask John. You need real results in your life. You heard the testimony of our precious mommy. You see that? That you just sit in a car and something... A challenge of many years just goes. Everybody is a giver. There is a level of results that will make them give. Please listen. Let me tell you this. The same person who will say, I will not give you five naira, is the same person who will carry money and say, sir, the privilege of having this. Everybody who gives to you has relatives in need. That they say, don't disturb me again. And they will come. There is a level of impact that will make any seed look like a favor to you. You need to trust God. Results empower you yourself. There are companies today and there are businesses today that take a sizable portion of their profits. And I'm not talking of small startups. And transfer to this ministry consistently because of something that happened. I don't say this to brag. It's because we're in a pastor's conference. I am a non-executive board member in certain companies. I never sat down in any board meeting. I don't even know them. They believe I represent the ark of God to their business. And they are there. And I just see alerts in my phone. Where is this coming from? Don't trivialize results. Results can make your life easy. We are going to pray it again. Please don't be tired. Our time is gone, but we are men of God. Listen, Lord, I have seen certain dimensions of results, but multiply the results upon my life. Beyond argument, please pray. Beyond contention. Hallelujah. The last prayer point. John chapter 1 and verse 6. Never forget this scripture for as long as you live. There is a goal, there is an object behind everything that we do, that we call ministry. Whether it is the fivefold ministry or your business as a ministry, ministry is any channel that can lead to souls saved, lives transformed, and Jesus glorified. If giving birth can do that, it is ministry. If singing can do that, it is ministry. 
it says there was a man sent from God. His name was John 7. The same, the Bible says, came for a witness. Say witness. To bear witness of the light that men through him, his witness, his testimony, his results might believe. That's it. When all is said and done, dear people of God, this is all we are driving at. That through my life, through the hand of God upon my life, through my business, through the ministry, through family, through everything, that Jesus be glorified. You're going to turn this to a prayer and say, Father, use everything. Use my results. Use my life. Use my teachings. Use my business. Use my publicity. Even for your glory. Someone pray. For your glory use the wealth that you give me use the influence that you give me the power of the Holy Spirit access to the hearts of kings One of the ways that the kingdom was designed to advance, please listen, is through the, the wonder-walking manifestations of the power and the glory of God through men to men within a territory. That means that when a territory continues to experience the multifaceted dimensions of the Christ in miracles, signs wonders healings strange manifestations of his power the bible says that everywhere this kind happens an entire territory will always come towards where the hand of god is finding expression and that many multitudes both of men and women will come to jesus i came in and i met a gentleman sharing his testimony i was so blessed when he said in the dream remember that the demand and now he's waiting for the altar call that one is the power of god are we together ministry is easy when there is results you see let me tell you anything is hard when there are no results so we are a people of results consistent results anything will be difficult when there are no results Tonight, several people have come, several others connecting from around the world. Why? Number one, because we all together as a family love Jesus. But number two, because we have come believing. Believing, number one, according to Hebrews 11 verse 6, that he is, he exists. And then two, that he has the ability to reward. God is called a rewarder. He can reward them that diligently seek him. There are families represented here trusting God for all kinds of things, holding in their hands death sentences. Situations that only the power of God can solve. What then is ministry if it cannot culminate to the lifting of men? What then is ministry if it cannot draw men to Jesus? What then is ministry if it does not provide a platform for people to experience a dimension of God that is higher than science? A dimension of God that is higher than medicine? A dimension of God that is higher than economics? See, listen, let me tell you this. When you come before God, it is important that you respectfully acknowledge that men have understanding but when you come before the god of the universe please find a way of indoctrinating yourself that you are operating um you are dealing with a god that operates in a realm and a dimension that is higher than the scope of men he will use men but he does not walk by men he walks through men 
So it is not unusual that you are here right now and scientifically speaking, there is you put two and two together and it does not make sense how you will come out. When I was meditating on what I'll be sharing, just a little chat before we pray, I, I had a vision. And in that vision, I saw what would be a similitude of the experience of Jesus. Remember when he was going to Gadara and there was a storm. And I saw not the exact thing in the Bible, but I saw like a raging storm. And I knew that this would probably refer to a category of people seated here and outside and following online who are having all kinds of storms around their lives. It may be to go back to that scripture and just study it very carefully. <clears throat> Because if Jesus calmed the storm, then you should study what he did. Are we together? Can we look at it for just two minutes before we pray? Luke chapter 8. Let's look at Luke's account. I love the scriptures. Luke chapter 8. Verse 22. Now it came to pass on a certain day. Listen. Listen. That he went into a ship with his disciples and he said unto them, Let us go over to the other side of the lake. And they launched forth. Uh-huh. Let's continue. But as they sailed, remember it was vision that brought this trouble. If they were not moving forward, there would be no need for a storm. Sometimes a storm does not mean you are wrong. It could mean you are right. They were on their way to the other side. Sometimes not having a storm does not mean you are all right. There are times that it means you are not doing anything. You are not moving. They were on their way to the other side. And then the Bible says that a storm arose. But as they sailed, he, Jesus now, fell asleep. And there came down a storm of wind on the lake. And they were filled with water and they were in jeopardy. 24 and they came to him and awoke him saying master master another version says careless not that we perish and he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water and they ceased and there was calm leave it there leave that scripture there <laughs> look up a storm is made of two things number one wind number two water every storm is made of wind and water the bible says to calm the storm jesus dealt with two things he dealt with the wind and he dealt with the water that a storm does not just happen until these elements are present the wind and the water the wind in scripture always talks about the spiritual impute the realm of the spirit all through consistent from genesis 1 breathing upon them the breath of god ezekiel 37 are we together right everywhere the bible talks about wind it has to do with the spiritual dimension of anything and then number two the bible talks of water water in scripture especially with this kind of reference refers to men multitudes the voice of god is mighty upon the waters so the Bible says you have no business having a storm until there is wind and water. There has to be a spiritual dimension for every storm to be called a storm. And then there must be human factors that can work in partnership with the realm of the spirit to make a storm real. So Jesus is on his way going. We see that there are spirits we know that this is true because as soon as he gets to gadara we see a man and we see spirits so this condition was fulfilled are we together now that a storm cannot be a storm until there is wind and water jesus gets up and with this intelligence he knows what to rebuke the bible says look at the bible says he rebuked the wind one side and then the raging of the water was it not the man in Gadara who was raging with anger? 
are we together now the bible says they would bind that man and put him in grave and i mean at rocks and he would break the chains he came to jesus and said what is all this you have come to destroy us do not torment us and jesus rebukes the spirit jesus corrects that man and when you read down here, the Bible says he came and met the man in his right mind, in his right senses. So that means that every time humans go through storms, it's a combination of two things. One, the physical body, the situation that looks obvious. But that in the realm of the spirit, there is a wind that gives that water life. That the water does not move on its own. It is sponsored by an agency. That the family problem is more than just two people. Are we together now that the financial storm is not just about money naira and cobble every storm is made of wind and water jesus did not only rebuke the wind the bible says he rebuked the raging of the water and the bible said they like two living things ceased and there was calm jesus is teaching us how to calm storms that every time there is a storm number one know that it only comes because you are moving forward let us go to the other side you know we have this mindset that every time storms come sometimes they mean you are wrong it may mean you are right jesus never said let us go back he did something about that situation there are times that going back is not an option you have the power to calm the storm and that the first thing he did just to encourage someone that the first thing jesus did was to rebuke the wind in that order because according to james 2 and verse 26 a spirit without a body is dead behind every body there is a spirit component to it behind every situation as a body there is a spirit component to it so he rebukes the spirit this is the same thing jesus did also when you read the 12th chapter of luke the bible lets us know that one time um he met a woman who had been stooped for 18 years he said and he said woman thou art loosed from your infirmity and then when the woman was loosed he now laid hands on her and straightened her and said ought not this woman being a daughter of abraham ought not this woman she shouldn't be in this condition as a daughter of abraham there are storms that continue to rage when god showed me that vision i knew exactly what he was saying there are many people who will focus on what is obvious the financial issue the marital issue the career issue you are just looking at the water the raging of the water but that the water in itself has a wind behind it there is a spirit that is sponsoring that family catastrophe there is a spirit listen very carefully this our generation that continues to ignore the reality of the spirit realm it's amazing how we try to ignore we find a way of convincing ourselves that there are no spirit influences in the world of men and if any is just mind no there are real spirits they are alive they influence people's finances they influence marriages they influence ministries they influence results every time jesus was going to handle issues he dealt with the spiritual dimension first and then he corrected the physical dimension are we together that means adjusting things from the physical is a total waste of time there are people who the solution to their problem is not counseling the guy is not a thief as a habit he's a thief as an influence that's the reason why no matter where you hide what you hide the spirit works like a prophetic spirit with word of knowledge he will know where it was kept that's not a habit there are people like jonah who are carrying all kinds of presents that continue to program difficulties in their lives even something that should be easy when it gets to your turn it becomes horribly difficult it's a spirit when there is a raging storm that the way to deal with it is to rebuke
rebuke the wind then rebuke the water then both of them will be calm you rebuke your child and you leave the wind you are in trouble imagine that jesus met the guy at gadara and said that's all right no problem just dress well and uh, behave yourself next time when you see me no legion legion of devils in one man and jesus said go out of this man now and they left and then the man imagine the man taking his bath a sound and a sane man coming back and you look at him and say ah, yesterday you were you were not like this and the man will say yes because it was me plus other entities see i have learned by experience and by scripture the the power of victory when realities in the realm of the spirit are settled is a total waste of time i am telling you to approach things purely from a scientific point or from a sociological point at best it can just provide temporary succor but if it's results you are looking for all realities must first be settled in the realm of the spirit the bible says in hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 starting says now faith is the substance of things hoped for it calls faith the evidence of things not seen and then he says for by it the elders obtained a good report verse 3 says through faith we understand that the walls were framed by the word of god the second part is my interest he says so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear that means the physical realm does not give birth to the physical realm the physical realm is a child that comes from another dimension every good thing has an origin from the realm of the spirit every evil thing also has an origin from the realm of the spirit are we together When a woman gives birth to a child, sorry to use this analogy, the child comes out and you notice there is an umbilical cord that connects into the woman. That umbilical cord is a testimony that that child started from within. Is that true? This is the same thing. Listen carefully. Every situation you see is like a baby. When you trace carefully, you will trace the umbilical cord and it will disappear. You will have to be spiritual to know where it extends to. And some spiritual umbilical cords are long because they come from regions that are very far. Hallelujah. But what does the doctor do to have the child completely free? He cuts it off. Period. For as long as that umbilical cord is there, that connection remains. And then he cuts it off. This is exactly how it is stop approaching life just from the physical standpoint i am telling you this it's a waste of time it's a waste of time i have read my bible and i have learned every flourishing ministry does not start just by an anointed man and cheers and members and keyboardists and intelligent speaking no sir it starts from the realm of the spirit there must be a testimony in the realm of the spirit that reflects in the physical the book of job how did it start the bible says once upon a time the writer of job gave us the duality of realms we were able to see things from both realms and the bible says the whole story did not start just on earth that the discussion started in the realm of the spirit in the heavenlies and a man came and was proposing all kinds of things satan going to and fro and god said have you considered my servant job and Satan testified and said, well, I came to him and I found him fortified. And he said, is it for nothing that you cover this man? While that is happening in the realm of the spirit, Job gets up in the morning and he does not know that he's one week left for his tragedy to start. He's on earth. Hmm. Imagine the night before all his children will die and all his cattle. He was still the greatest man in the east. But overnight, 
when the realm of the spirit finishes something it will take only god to correct it whatever happens in the physical realm is just acting believe me the same way from the foundations of the earth the lamb was already slain and so it will be impossible for it not to happen in the physical realm regardless of what satan did all the manipulations are we together the bible says that god has blessed us already with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in christ is already done that means the the reality that these things have been established in the realm of the spirit should give us confidence that for as long as we partner with god inevitably it must find expression in the physical realm this i believe build the ministry from the realm of the spirit and watch what happens in the physical realm build the business from the realm of the spirit and what what happens in the physical realm build the children from the realm of the spirit the dedication i did for our little one here that's what they did for many people they dedicated them to idols and immediately the next week they went to america and never came to nigeria again yet their lives continue to parallel somebody in the village although they're in america why because there was an authorization that the realm of the spirit will should feel free to continue to create scenarios that draw people back we are thriving and excelling because what you see is only a reflection it has been finished already the miracle service has been finished already in the realm of the spirit the rejoicing version of you is already a reality in the realm of the spirit are you seeing that now and that's why for as long as your heart is open and your faith can connect inevitably you will see the hand of god he said who has believed our report to him that man the arm of the lord has been made manifest why do we call for these kinds of services they are not just moments to while away time there are several people outside everywhere thousands of people all around this ground and many more connecting around the world god is not stupid to gather a people some of you left this journey from maybe outside of this nation within this nation traveling risking your life to come and sit down would god be joking with you to bring you here Abba. i believe in jesus i believe in his power i believe that god can turn things around listen to me please i want to shake off unbelief from you I believe that God in a moment in a twinkling of an eye that a whole family can come and just sit in and say Lord can you turn our lives ha! do you know as a man of God I've been around this thing for a while and maybe a little while and I'm telling you myself even as a man who God has helped sometimes I am in awe and shock at the way God moves that someone can just come and sit in the presence of God, my brothers and sisters, and the anointing of the Holy Spirit comes like a drug, and that's it. You step up and doors open, just like that. It's like a dream. Everything you are looking for is also looking for you. Please hear me. Believe what I tell you. Everything you are looking for is looking for you if it has not gotten to you something stopped it i desired once and again to come to you but satan hindered us everything you are looking for is looking for you the breakthrough the lifting the anointing the new levels the increase the expansion it is god's will his testament already tells us there's no need going to pray and say is it god's will no the will of god is revealed through his word i wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospereth and then scripture says let god be true and that every man a liar 
if you believe this about God, then you will also know that the Bible says, while we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen. Why? Because the things that are seen are temporal. What does temporal mean? Subject to change. Fading. But the things that are unseen are eternal. That means everything that does not represent the counsel of God can change. Can change. It's a miracle that my life of lack can change. Are we together now? My life of living from drug to drug, from death sentence to death sentence can change. So the question tonight is not can God do it? No, no, no. The ministry of Jesus captured all of this. He preached, he taught, he healed the sick. Listen carefully. He casted out devils. He made for the provisions of people that there be supplies. So I know God is able to do it. Please don't come sitting here tonight wondering. I've gone to many churches, you may say. I've been prayed for by several people. Apostle, you don't know the amount of vigils. Let me tell you something. And I submit to you respectfully. Every challenge is at the mercy of the grace that confronts it. Listen very carefully. Don't generalize troubles. Every challenge is at the mercy of the grace that confronts it. The anointing is like money. If you have 1,000, you have money. But that money can only buy to the limit of 1,000. And if what you need to buy is 10,000, you are in trouble. You will need to add nine of what you already have. In addition to what you have. To make that a possibility. So then death walks in us. That life will walk in you. My assignment is to continue to grow in the anointing. And to continue to grow in the revelation of the truth. Why? Because it is in that growth that more people's testimony is resident. That means the testimony that the level of grace I occupied three, four, five years could not produce. If it cannot produce that result till now, then I'm not growing. The problem is never with those who are having the challenge. You see, I continue to say this. The problem is not with members. It's not with the sick people. No. The problem is the limitation of the grace that is upon the person who is dispensing the word. It is true. Why do you call one doctor consultant and then you call another um, a resident doctor? What is the difference? They are all doctors. Is that true? Are they all doctors? I believe in the power of God. I truly believe in miracles. I believe in miracles. Number one, because the Bible allows it. Number two, because this is how men know that Jesus is Lord. Listen to me. The demonstration of the power of God in miracles, signs and wonders. No matter who argues around it is the authorized signature sign El Shaddai this is how he walks when he moves upon the lives of people he leaves his signature there where the carcasses are they say that's where the eagles will gather please let me encourage you if you are a man of God here and you are here in this meeting please desire more than receiving a miracle desire a solid impartation of a real grace that is provable, 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 provable. No amount of poster would do the work of a real miracle. No amount of handbill, now I'm not being sarcastic, will do the work of a real miracle. A transformed life is a real miracle. A healed body is a real miracle. Hallelujah. We have come here tonight to celebrate the hand of God resting upon people, resting upon families. Some of you are here for the first time because through the messages and through testimonies you have heard that this is what God is doing. Now you are seated like somebody who is ready to watch a movie and you are wondering, okay, is my case too big? Will God be able to visit me? 
you know reminds me of how patients talk to doctors they believe that the doctor has never seen their phone say doctor you don't know the pain eh? when i'm telling the doctor i already know the situation don't just be patient say, don't allow me let me let me explain to you let me even try to turn and he's looking and the man says i was in medicine before you were born i've met this kind of thing before i know the solution and sometimes the solution is funny he can just give him a prescription and he said that's all i thought i would be on admission i said no no it doesn't call for that kind of emergency just because you are threatened by the situation does not mean the situation is a threat no, no. apostle you don't know the kind of financial trouble that is on my head that brought me here no it's a threat to you but it's not a threat find a way of believing what i'm saying because it is true the son of righteousness is here with healing in his wings yeah. the son of righteousness is here with lifting in his wings the son of righteousness is here with speed in his wings for someone's destiny the son of righteousness is here with fire in his wings The Son of Righteousness is here with healing in His wings. Listen, when the Lord called me, I told Him something. I said, Lord, I know how unfair it is to gather a people and not have the power to allow your might to be revealed in them. You know, most times there are people who just act as if once the people hear the revelation of the word is all right uh, if they are not changed that's okay no i believe in miracles i believe in the word becoming flesh god reaching down to people i believe in situations changing with proofs proofs your account proof your destiny proof everything with proof and we will continue to thrive and push through and see to it that by the grace of god almighty that we grow to realms in the spirit where every challenge that comes is within the jurisdiction of the grace provided to provide answers that's what god does you come and sit down in this atmosphere ladies and gentlemen and you are wondering can God step into my situation I love Jesus with all my heart I have read the scripture I have seen what God can do can God give me a job can God open a door can God put this anointing upon my life can God lift the death sentence over my life can God bring to end this age-long captivity that has tied the family the answer is yes let me repeat the answer is yes God is able before God gathers a people like this he will check first whether he has the power to do it it is based on that conclusion that he gathers a people he will call a solemn assembly and say come and experience God hallelujah praise the Lord so tonight I like your faith to be fired up don't don't allow the devil to reduce you to the realm of the flesh where you are wondering how can God make a way in the wilderness there are many ways God can deliver you from the wilderness. He can leave the wilderness there and carry you. That's method one. Number two, he can scatter every rock in the wilderness and make a road out of it. Three, he can leave you there and carry the wilderness. It doesn't matter how he does it. The most important thing is you are separated from it. Look at the size of your challenge. The heaven is his throne and the earth is his footstool footstool hallelujah it is footstool 
Please help those here. The power of God. I just saw light just flashing here. Two people just here. The power of God is touching them. The Lord straight up is visiting them. And for one, I'm seeing God remove something that looks like a growth around the stomach. I command that growth to go now in the name of Jesus. There are two of them. There's two. I saw two lights. So just this way. And it's the ministry of the spirit, you see two lights there is there is one something is coming out of the stomach is what i'm seeing um i don't know what it is looking like but it's looking like a thread just coming out of the stomach lord we believe in you lord we believe in you there is a man of god here the power of god is coming on him you are a ministry you are a man of god I just saw it by the Spirit. Let me tell you why these things happen. Look up, please. Let me teach you something. Don't worry about the time. I just want to show you something in two minutes. I just fell to digress. You see, all you see is not all there is. When God calls a man, there is not only an anointing, there is an office and there is a throne that defends what he represents. There are certain operations of the spirit that are not only products of the anointing. No. There are certain operations that are legislations. It is not the anointing that makes it happen. There is an office in the realm of the spirit recognized accredited by god allocated for that grace and that office please listen understand what i'm teaching you so that when words come like this i'm not trying to transfer the anointing to the person to make it happen no 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 there are times that that happens try to understand what i'm teaching you there are things that are they are governmental legislations you see let me tell you there is growth in the spirit and people can grow to realms where certain privileges are given to them what was the privilege of the man with the parable of the five two and one talent he said i set thee over kingdoms what kingdoms that was the reward he got a ranking in the spirit that means i extend your dominion that these other kingdoms they also come under the influence of your speaking that means you can declare things when i started out in ministry i would not minister that way because it was not by this this grace for legislature it was just about the anointing being properly channeled but now that's not just the issue now no at that level you will not be able to minister to a crowd like this you see that so when i declare and i speak sometimes it is not just an anointed man speaking no there are speakings that come from the anointing but there are speakings that come by reason of the office that speaks the centurion said i am a man under authority authority there is a government there i am a captain i have an allocation in the army there are people who must hear me because i am under that grace that means there are things that can be called listen oh dear. if i am walking if i am working in a restaurant and i am the manager in that restaurant now whether i can cook or not i am the manager do you understand what i'm saying and that means there are certain privileges that can happen is that true it is within my power to tell you come and sit down in that restaurant please serve him you see that i cannot cook physically but I occupy a position that has a cook under me. I can make his grace work for you. This is what I'm saying. I'm not the one who prepared the food. 
but there is somebody who can cook but both the cook and all of this is within the restaurant was given to my care let me tell you what this means please listen and, and i'm careful to say this because many young people once they get these kinds of things they usually will not understand what the man of god is saying and they will go online and start writing things that are er erroneous let me tell you this there is an office you can occupy that the grace must not be on you to reach people that means if pastor femi has a grace for prayer and you need it i can grow to a point in the spirit whereby the power of submission i me a man i can take the grace on him for prayer because it is needed and it is part of the apostolic duty to see that this guy's prayer life is on i can partner with the holy spirit and take the grace for prayer that is on him i may not have it as a person but because he needs that grace god can use me to take that grace and place it on someone it's true We remain humble before God and we thank him for the things that he continues to provide. But let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, men are not just men. This is a revelation that is very, is very difficult to understand, but it's powerful when understood. So when God gathers us like this, God will not bring you to a place that cannot bless you. No, God does not work like that. He will first check your problem before directing you. So if he allowed you to come, it is because he has checked. It's like a checklist. And he said, no, no, no. The grace for your problem is here. Go. You can go. The same way you apply for admission, you first check whether the course you want, do they offer it? Just because they don't offer your course does not mean they are not a university. There are times that only one university is offering a particular course and you will travel and go down there why because you want to access it this is how these things are spiritually too sometimes doesn't mean that we're the only ones doing what we're doing that would be pride and that would be untrue but let me tell you something that as god continues to engrace us then he provides a platform and an opportunity for the anointing to step i know that not many of us are sick crippled and all of that so it's difficult because you may not see visible signs immediately but the anointing comes on you and then you can go as you go you, you know what is on you by what starts to change so you're a man of god you go back ah i came to zaria it was a powerful meeting and then god leads you to certain people and for the first time you are surprised you are talking to the person and you are hearing names that you don't know you are saying okay i used to just think these things are intuition so the speakings of god can be this clear i can know it this much Tonight is not only a night of deliverance. Tonight is not only a night of healing. Tonight is not only a night to calm storms. Tonight is a night of receiving. I really believe that impartations to receive, to receive. You have to add to the grace that is upon your life already. Grace and peace be multiplied. If you stay where you are, you will not grow in results. Grace and peace be multiplied. You are a prayer warrior you are the you are a leader in a group you remain at that level everybody will go and leave you there and they will not listen to you again that's the truth because they have exhausted the level of grace it's not that they don't want to love you you have to grow so take away your mind from anything that can distract and focus on god place something upon my life lord you have come put something upon my life put something upon my destiny and if you came here as a family put something oh god upon our family son of righteousness is he with fire in his eyes the son of righteousness is he with healing in his wings hallelujah who is deborah overflow one 
just we are going to be very fast tonight deborah someone in overflow one deborah we are going to pray deborah she's at the back you are wearing something on your head you are tying something on your head outside overflow one son of righteousness is here healing in his wings son of righteousness is here i'm going to pray but the person i'm seeing is wearing traditionals it's like it has a little of maroon touch on it traditionals this is what i'm seeing i will pray for you the son of righteousness is here when you find such if there's if there's nobody like that no problem my dear where are you coming from Zaria, I want to pray for you. Look at me. Your life will so change this night. It will surprise you. There is a God in heaven. I'm seeing you crying and the Lord is wiping your tears completely. Just by his spirit. He's wiping. Where are you from? The mic is not working. Find out why. Please. Can I pray for you? Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. I release you my dear Deborah is your name in the name of Jesus I stretch my hands I release you from captivity I set you free by the Spirit of the Living God I'm seeing something that has tied you huh? from head to toe but the Lord is saying to release you and I declare to you by the Spirit of the Living God that God now is releasing you completely by the Spirit of the Living God releasing you right now my dear where are you coming from? Outside? Your name is Deborah. Can I pray for you? In the name of Jesus. Who is that? Her name is Deborah. Where was she? Outside? What's wrong with her? Huh? Why? How long, madam? Madam, you feel pain in your back? Yes, sir. Severe pain? Yes, sir. Where? Here, like this. From my back. Mm. We're going to pray for the sick. Huh? So when we pray for the sick, you will come out and I'll pray for you. Okay? You came with her? You're her daughter? Who are you? Just a friend that came. Very nice lady. Come. What, do you, what are you trusting God for? Huh? A life partner i love you you're a very honest and sincere lady and i'm going to pray for you huh? hold my hands father honor your word in the name of jesus christ give this lady a very godly man by the spirit of the living god find somewhere for her let her sit down we're going to pray i want to pray we're going to do a very quick walk tonight the power of god is coming on someone around the worship team here i just saw just like light I don't know who that person is, but I just saw light around the worship team. We are going to pray. Please lift your voice in one minute and cry, Lord, visit me. Please pray quickly. Lift your voice and pray. Make sure you pray. Something must come upon your life tonight.
Hallelujah. Where are you coming from? Come, this lady. You, yes. Where are you coming from? You are schooling here. From where? Your state. You are from Kaduna State. Where are your loved ones? Tell them the month of November is a month of breakthrough for your family. Huh? That's what God is telling me to tell you. November is a very strange month of breakthrough. Huh? Your dad. That's what I'm saying. Something would have happened to someone this November, but the Lord is saying November is a month of breakthrough for your family. In the name of Jesus, I declare and I prophesy to you, let it come to an end now. The spirit that kills people by November, it comes to an end now. I command by the spirit of the living God. The Bible says, now the Lord is that spirit. It says, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is liberty. There is liberty. There is liberty. Let it end. Let it be over right now. Let it be over right now. Sabaratu shikala hasibada. Father, I pray tonight in the name that is above all names that your mighty power in the name of Jesus the Son of the living God that it be made manifest across this place. Let yokes be lifted. Let burdens be lifted. Let all kinds of yokes be broken. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now listen please. I want to pray for you. Please pay attention. Focus on Jesus. It is not just a call to have people fall under the anointing. No. I want to pray and minister the power of God. That if there is anything at all within this circumference that is not of the Christ that as we pray the power of God comes upon you please we'll, have, we'll make it very fast and the ushers will bring them out we are going to shout that name that is above all names it's not a ritual wherefore God had so highly exalted him and given him a name Father in the name of Jesus I pray that you will honor your word and honor your name at the count of three together as a family of faith we are going to shout that name already i'm telling you i see fire just like rain but it's the rain of fire coming on people to end all kinds of oppressions at the count of three one two three shout jesus that every power that is not of god go now in the mighty name of jesus christ in the name that is above all names I decree and declare the forces of ancestry yokes of darkness please bring them out quickly 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 We are praying again hear me the bible says even the lawful captives shall be delivered you are going to shout that name again not just for yourself not just for your family that everything that is not by the christ it must give way right now i speak to principalities and powers and thrones and dominions and every name that is named are you ready to shout now at the count of three one two three shout jesus release them now release them now 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 release their destinies by the blood release them now the bible says even the captives of the mighty shall be delivered hallelujah was you praying 
You're going to shout two more times. This is the second to the last time. The Lord wants to end patterns. Something that happened to someone. Your mother is now happening to you. Your mother was raped. You are now being raped. Your father failed. You now failed. In the name of Jesus, I declare. Now, this one, I see fire coming on several people. Inside and outside. Lord, I pray. Anyone here who is a victim of patterns. Strengthened by spirit. At this shout, oh God, let there be deliverance. One, two, three, shout Jesus. Be free now. Be free now. Repeatable patterns that tie people down. Outside, inside, be free now. everyone who is under the influence of any strange spirit whether here or any of the overflows i declare to those spirits the bible says now the lord is that spirit and that where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty i speak by the anointing in the name of jesus that this spirit let them go and release the families all those in front here at the count of three release them release their families one two three go now go 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 the woman holding photo there's a woman here holding a picture there's a woman holding a picture. Come, madam. Let every other name fade away. Come, madam. Let every other name fade away. Till there's only you. Jesus, take your place. Jesus, take your place. Let every other day, every other day, Madam, where are you coming from, ma? From Portacot. I want to pray for you. I'm seeing a stronghold of witchcraft across your family. But the Lord is saying, these are your children. Where are they? Your children, I'm seeing two of your children in the U.S. Is the mic working? It's not working. Is it working? Please help us. Let there be someone who is... Huh? I'm seeing two of your children in U.S. How many of them are in U.S.? Okay, three of them in U.S. Who is in U.K.? Where is the one in U.K.? There's one in U.K. Listen to me, madam. God is going to come upon your family and bring rest roundabout rest roundabout in the name of jesus madam i lay my hands on you and upon this request turn every captivity my god to become like the streams of negev the negev be free now in the mighty name of jesus christ over now the power of god will touch them in the u.s in the uk i bring liberty to this family right now in the name of jesus christ Um, my friend, this man, please just clear the way for me. The man with gray hair just near this one. Come, sir. Let every other name fade away. Where are you coming from, sir? Niger State. From Niger State. Are you a man of God? What do you do? You are a pastor. Where? I have a ministry. Point of joint ministry. You have a ministry. I have to pray for you. I'm seeing a serious embargo. First on your life and then on your ministry. I don't know you, sir. I've not seen anything around you. But I want to pray 
because I am seeing number one, God is taking away this embargo upon your life. But number two, I'm seeing that God is granting you the spirit of revelation, Amen. the revelatory grace, Amen. revelatory dimension of the anointing. Amen. And then I'm also seeing God raising financial support, help us, Amen. very strong pillars for you. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Can I pray for you, sir? Is it all right if right. I pray for you? Right. I hope you're not embarrassed that I pray for you. I hope you're not embarrassed that I pray for you. No, no, no. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for this servant of God. Sir, in the name that is above all names, I speak to you because you believe. May the Lord shift you to a new dimension of ministry. Let the grace for revelation rest mighty upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I declare to you, God will raise strange financial helpers to attend to your needs. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Who is, I'm hearing... Who is Ezekiel? Ezekiel. We have to hurry up, but I'm hearing a name Ezekiel. Of course, I can imagine that there will be so many people with that name, but we have to hurry up because I want to pray. Ezekiel. I'm hearing a name Ezekiel. And the Lord wants to minister to that person now, please. Every foul spirit. There is a family here. You are from Zonkua. Zonkua should be Southern Kaduna. Is that? Zonkua. Where are you? Please verify. Let's, let's make sure that. You are a family. Oh, it's not just one person. I'm not just saying one person who came. There are many people who came who are from Zonkua. We're in Kaduna State. I'm saying a family. This is what God is revealing to me. Let me pray for you. You came out for Ezekiel. I want to pray for you. What do you do, my friend? You are, you are brothers? Ezekiel, I will pray for you. I, of course, I will pray generally, but it, it may not necessarily be for everybody. My friend, let me pray for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, please, hold on. I hope, I hope, Yes, that's why they are coming out. Why, why are all of you out for Ezekiel? Okay, I'll pray for you. The Lord is asking me to do something except that the Lord said so. I wouldn't have done it. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I'm seeing at least eleven people when I pray for them. Please don't be embarrassed. The addiction of smoking. Um, either drugs or this um, uh, all these things that they smoke there, I'm seeing at least 11 people and the Lord is saying he wants to deliver them now now in this place I'm going to pray for these gentlemen but I'm going to ask those people listen there's nothing to be embarrassed about I, like I said I would not call you to embarrass you but God is showing me both men and women not only women addicted to smoking this codeine or, or cocaine or whatever it is drugs the lord wants me to pray for those people so i'll immediately i pray for this i will call you please leave your friend leave whatever you are doing and you come and stand and i'll pray for you my friend let me pray for you in the name of jesus i declare that god is lifting you in the name of jesus christ god is lifting you by the power of the holy spirit and that everything that does not represent the counsel of God, let it live your life right now. And for all of you who stood in for the name Ezekiel, I pray for you. My friend, look at me. God is visiting your family, eh? You. is visiting your family in a very strange way. This, it will not reach weekend, next week, before you start getting testimonies. Amen. This thing I'm telling you is less than one week. Write it down. I speak to you by the Spirit of God. May the Lord honor this word. And for all of you who are standing in for Ezekiel in the name of Jesus, everything around your life that is not the planting of the Lord be delivered right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, God bless you. What's, what's, well, from Zonkwasa? 
Are you a family? Yes, God, it's not family. This is our father, but he cannot speak English. No so. problem. He's welcome. Please come. Let him come. No, don't don't let the children who cry. Their children. Is it the same family? Yes. Uh, don't worry. I'll pray for you. And this one's too. And your children, madam. What do you do, ma? You are a nurse. I will pray for you, Ho. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, turn this woman's life around. Amen. And turn the life of her children around. In Jesus' name. God bless you. Um, who is what he speaks your language? You okay, when I talk to you, don't worry, you don't have to give up. When I talk to you, you will, you will interpret to him. Eh? Tell him that I'm seeing something that looks like a shrine. And that this thing has been responsible for the retrogression of everybody within this family. That people rise in this family just when they should sit down, they either die or go down. from school before he died. That's what I'm saying. Yes. I'm seeing that this is yes. what happens yes. just when people should this settle down. My brother, yes. Our first born, he graduated this? from school before he died. Is your father? Yes. Is he your brother? Yes, he's my brother. Okay. Oh, please, someone help us and attend to these children, please. These are your. Don't worry, my dear. There's no need to shout. Please tell him that there is a name that is above every other name. And that I'm going to pray right now. And no matter how long it has stayed, this entire family must be set free. Can I pray? What do you do? This where you love Jesus. I love Jesus. You are going to be an evangelist. I don't know yes. him. I don't know anything. I'm just, I'm just telling you that this man, I'm seeing by the spirit, this, this boy you are seeing is going to be a mighty man of God, an evangelist. Hold my hands. I release you into this grace. May this anointing take you to dimensions untold. In the name of Jesus Christ, fresh grace for prayer, fresh grace for the word. I shift you by the spirit into these dimensions now i pray for this family and every other family that has this kind of thing that there are forces that sit on people's destinies just when people should sit down they crash down in the name that is above all names i declare be free now be free now help this girl be free now every spirit look at the children i cause this spirit now now out of this family in the mighty name of jesus i release this family from the spirit of death and the influences of the grave be free in the name of jesus christ and let me prophesy to any other family here that is under this kind of yoke in the name of jesus come out of it now hallelujah God bless you. Thank you so much, sir. God bless you. Please, they can go back to your seat. Now, I want to pray. Our time is gone. We must hurry up tonight. But the Lord is showing me people who want to be delivered from this addiction to drugs and smoking. L listen, no, everybody here is a product of God's mercy. There's no such thing as anybody. There are not many times I do this, but I have to obey what God is. Are you here for that case? Huh? Okay. May the Lord bless you. In the name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless you. In Jesus' name. So please, I'm going to give one minute. Whether you are in overflow 3, overflow 2B, 2C, 4, wherever, or in here, you know that some people are not bad they are not bad people they just need to be free please run and come and stand here right now you are addicted to all of these drugs don't be looking at anybody to say so this one is none of your business please celebrate everyone it takes a lot of courage for them to come 
Are you clapping for them? Everyone, please. There are still more people because I saw a number of people in my vision as God was speaking to me. You love the Lord, but this addiction. See, these addictions are spirits. It's not about somebody being good or bad. Look at them coming. It's not, look, let me tell you the truth. Addiction is something that is, there is a spirit behind it. Please keep coming. Be bold and come and stand. God will set you free from it. Son of righteousness is he. With healing in his wings. Hey, 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 hey. The son of righteousness is he. With healing in his wings. Please hurry up. I'm about to pray for them now. So if you belong to that category, if your friend is stopping you, leave that friend and come and stand. Nobody is condemning you. It's an addiction. It's a spirit. When you see the kinds of people coming, some of them are better than you in terms of character. It's a spirit. We have to deal with this thing because it's killing people everywhere. Some of you just have dreams and right from the realm of dreams, you cannot resist it again. I want to pray a serious prayer for you. Jesus is here. Some of you were doing well. You were excelling even in life academically until that spirit just came. And it just brought you down. I want to pray for you. Some of you were introduced to it by friends. Friends. They brought you together. Gave you those things. Look at people coming. Let's celebrate them. Young and old. This is not an issue for young people. Young and old. All together. God is setting people free. Listen. Let me tell you. Sincerely. I love every one of you. And I know that many people would not have one tenth the courage to come and stand. This is a family. Nobody dares condemn you. We are products of his grace. The Lord wants to set you free once and for all. Hallelujah. Now listen, let me tell you this. Remember the teaching that I gave you. I told you that every storm is calmed by rebuking the wind and rebuking the water it is not what you hold and smoke or what you swallow that is the issue there is a spirit no amount of guidance and counseling will solve the problem you will need to be delivered and i want to pray for you praise the lord there are two things i want you to do for me one when i pray for you you have a responsibility to let some of the association because i know how addictive these associations are tell them that apostle joshua selman prayed for you and trust god for grace to leave them alone come to the house of god and make good friends are we together you are not free when your association is not free because some of you you probably have made attempts before but you will go back and you will meet those people and they will laugh at you and say forget about that nonsense so you have to trust God for grace. But let me pray for you. Please lift your hand if you can. Some of you are here. Some of you are standing for your children. Some of you are standing for your loved ones. I know that not all of you are standing for yourself. Father, you gave this as a revelation. There are many people under the addiction of strange spirits. And Lord, I stand right now by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And I declare that in the frontier from my left to my right, let the angel of deliverance move right now across this place and cut the help them, please, my God, and cut this change. I'm praying for all of you in front now. The legal basis upon which these spirits operate by the blood of the eternal covenant, I break that legal hold now. I break that legal hold now. The spirit of addiction to drugs. Be free from it now. Be free from it now. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Listen, I pray for every one of you. Hear me. I'm saying it again. I don't care how it came into your life. It leaves you now and forever. It leaves you now and forever. Any association that the devil uses to keep you here, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, I set you free from them forever. I declare by the anointing of the Holy Spirit that you are free. Say after me, all of you in front, say in the name of Jesus. Say it again, in the name of Jesus. I stand by the blood of Jesus and I declare that from tonight and forever, I am free from any and all forms of addiction. I declare that from tonight, addiction to drugs, addiction to anything that is not of the Christ, it leaves my life now. And every spirit behind it, I command you to let me go now. I declare my liberty. I declare that I am free in Jesus' name. Let it be so for you by the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm speaking to you by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. No one condemns you. We stand as a family. We stand by you. And we agree as a family of faith. You are free from this nonsense this night. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please return back to your seat rejoicing. Let's celebrate them. Return back to your seat rejoicing. Let's celebrate them. Hallelujah. Now, don't be embarrassed. I'm going to pray from here. But I'm seeing a spirit on a lady. It is only married men that look for you. Shalis kabarutas kabariata. Only married men. A young gentleman who can settle down with you will never be interested in you. But a man who is already married, that's the one who will look for you. In the name of Jesus, whether in this auditorium, overflow one, two, three. Whoever is standing under the influence of that spirit, I'm declaring right now by the anointing of the Holy Ghost, be free now. Shout aloud, amen. Be free now. Please help that girl. Be free now. I'm still praying. I'm, I'm still sensing this anointing is still, is like he's moving and searching for people. I say it again. That anointing, that grace, whatever it is, that makes only married men to look for you in the name that is above all names be free now be free now the lord is showing me a door in the spirit and i'm seeing that door closed before we pray for the sick the Lord is saying to open that door. I believe that there are many people. It represents the next level of several people's lives. I stand right now. My God, I'm seeing rain just coming on people. My God, the King of glory, I declare. Everybody who is standing in front of a closed door, I speak to that door, be open now. Be open now. Bring this woman for me. Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Who came with this madam? She came on her own. Because the kind of breakthrough I see God bringing for this woman will surprise you. Madam, I don't know you, but in a name that is above all names, you came with her? From where? Here. In the name of Jesus, madam, I don't know you, but I speak to you by the power that raised Christ from the dead. 
every closed door before you I command that door to be open now in the name of Jesus be open in the name of Jesus Christ be open in the name of Jesus as I pray for her in the name of Jesus Christ I command every spirit that is not of God to leave this lady look at her tearing her clothes you see how these wicked spirits work listen let me tell you something deliverance look at me deliverance is not just the issue of shouting and demons rolling up, up and down no now you can see this girl imagine that she's your fiance and your wedding is next week you see what we are saying I'm, I'm not saying she's a bad person please don't mm -mm. but you the spirit will not shout when they are joining you is when you have gotten married you see these wicked manifestations now the Lord is that spirit and the spirit where the spirit of the Lord is are you looking for a job who is looking for it I'm seeing hold on please listen I'm my sister please shift for me this fair lady where are you coming from Kaduna yes, sir. come and stand here I'm seeing someone shaking your hands that you got a job are you looking for a job let us stand up are you looking for a job yes sir hear the word of the lord i'm telling you i'm seeing god giving you a job that will surprise you there's, there's no need to cry god is here to roll away reproach and to take away shame i prophesy to you in the name of jesus according to this that the lord has revealed you will come and stand here and you will testify of your job in the name of jesus let the power of god come upon you and set you free right now now very quickly we are going to do two things please if how many of you have written your prayer requests if you have written your prayer request please bring it out if you have not written it take time to write very quickly now um, what is I'm hearing Baba Silas what is Baba Silas Baba Silas I don't know if that is a name or that's a name of somebody's father. Baba Silas is what I'm hearing. If there is such a person, let me just talk to the person. Now, quickly, please submit your prayer requests. Um, there will be ushers, PR, help them, or whatever department. Huh? What? Give him the mic. What's your name? What's your name? Huh? Your brother is Silas. I'm hearing is Baba Silas. I will pray for you. I'm not. Why are they coming out, please? Huh? Your father is Silas. We'll pray for you. Let me just touch you and then you go back. Let it be over in Jesus' name. Whatever it is you are standing in for, let it be over in Jesus' name. Forever. In the name of Jesus Christ by the anointing of the Holy Spirit over forever in the name of Jesus whatever the challenge is over forever in the name of Jesus Christ I set you free from sickness they will not say you have fibroid I curse that devil that lady you are carrying I rebuke that spirit in the name of Jesus Christ alright please all those listen please we are going to pray for the sick now um there are so many people tonight and we have to be fast. Our time is gone. But let me say this. Whether you are in overflow one or two or three, if you are coming here particularly trusting God for fruit of the womb, whatever overflow, no matter how far, I want you to come into this main auditorium because I will pray for you. Um, alongside them, all those who are trusting God for healing, please come and stand now. Overflow one, please move to your projector stand. Um, protocol will have to help me. How many overflows do we have tonight? Yes. You reign, you reign, Elohim, 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 you reign, you reign, you reign, you reign. Thank you for your patience. Please rise up on your feet. Stretch your hands to this place. Cry from the depth of your heart. You don't have to kneel. Please stand. Cry from the depth of your heart, Father, 
this Egyptian that I see today, I see them no more forever. Is someone stretching your hands? Pray, pray, don't look around, pray. Unto you that answers prayer shall all flesh come. In the name of Jesus, turn situations around. In the name of Jesus, wipe tears. In the name of Jesus, let impossible situations turn around. Declare it. Those online follow us as we pray. We prophesy upon these requests. We pray over your request in the name that is above all names. The God of miracles. We cry, Abba Father, hallowed. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. We cry, our Father. We cry, our Father. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. Let me tell you this. This part of the miracle service is a very powerful part. People have recorded unspeakable testimonies, turnarounds by the hand of God. Father, I bow my knees in the name of Jesus. By the privilege of the grace that you have supplied, I bring before you, O oh God, the pain, the tears, the requests of your people. They have brought this as a token of their faith, as proof that they believe you. Lord, you do these things because you love us, but you also do it to honor our faith. Therefore, Lord, I stand in agreement with the Spirit and I declare that every situation represented here turns into a testimony now. Every situation represented here by the God of heaven turns into a testimony now. Whoever must lose sleep for this prayer to be answered, we declare it so. Whoever must hear instructions from God for this request to be answered, we declare it so. Whoever must be lifted for this prayer to be answered, we declare it so. Whoever must go down for this prayer to be answered, we declare it so. Father, I cry in your name. Let this not just be a ceremony tonight. Your people have waited. Your people have prayed honor the faith of everyone here with strange results in the name of Jesus there are situations here that need creation it does not yet exist in the earth realm we call it from the realm of the spirit to appear in the physical realm in the mighty name of Jesus Christ Lord, there are situations here that only you can solve. Some of them are death sentences. Some of them are issues that relate to life and destiny. We cry to you, O God of heaven, arise tonight and do strange miracles. That by this time, next miracle service, some people will only write to intercede for others. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please keep standing, everybody. Keep standing. I want to pray for you now.
thank you for your patience, but I want to speak over your life and I want you to believe every word. Blessed is she that believes, for unto her there shall be a performance. I prophesy to you, number one, doors be open now. Doors be open now. Gates be open now. Gates be open now. Everyone here in ministry, I stretch my hands towards you. The fire, the grace, shalakatostia. The unction for a new level. The operation of the gifts of the spirit. The operation of revelatory dimensions. Step into it now in the name of Jesus. Step into it now in the name of Jesus. Let me pray over your finances. This is a year of extraordinary fruitfulness. I stand by the God of heaven and I declare by the power of prophecy supernatural supplies for you. Supernatural supplies by the wisdom of God. Every pit you have found yourself in, in the name of Jesus, come out of that pit now. Come out of that pit now. Come out of that pit now. I pray for every family here that has not yet seen the goodness of God in experience this year. I speak to you by the power that raised Christ from the dead. You will return here with strange testimonies. Everything that is yours but is not yet in your hands. I stand by the God of heaven and by prophecy wherever it is i command you to locate your hand and your destiny i command you to locate your hand and your destiny i pray for those trusting god for jobs father you are the one who gives jobs i declare that between now and the next one month oh god of heaven let us have strange testimonies of miracle jobs. Strange testimonies of miracle jobs. I'm praying for everybody. But this prayer particularly is for the men. The grace that establishes a man. That can grant you stability. Whether financially, structurally may that grace please believe it may that grace land on your life now structural establishment in the name of jesus christ every dying business in the mighty name of jesus hear the word of the lord i speak by the spirit let it jack back to life now I pray for your prayer life. The fire you have not seen from January, even up until September. The grace to fast, the grace to travel, wherever you are, let it rest upon your life now. I pray for you, access to the mysteries of the kingdom. The grace that can open a man's eyes to scripture that you will see. May that grace rest upon you now. Every opportunity that once came to you but was not well utilized and has left you in the name of Jesus and by the mercy of God I stand tonight and I call for a repeat of it. A repeat of that opportunity a repeat of that opportunity may God restore time may God restore opportunities in the name of Jesus Christ every one of your family members that has been grounded for whatever reason in the name of Jesus as you are standing here may the angel of the Lord wherever they are across this nation or around the nations of the world may the angel of the Lord ensure that in this
this season they are lifted I declare that they are lifted anyone called barren whether biological barrenness financial barrenness ministerial barrenness I speak to you be fruitful multiply replenish subdue I say it again be fruitful multiply replenish subdue every helper of destiny that must show up in this season for you to rise wherever they are I cry unto my God who is your God in the name of Jesus may they appear before your destiny hallelujah some of you have been at the same level you have not gone down but you have not gone up either in the name of Jesus this night I push you by prophecy step into the next level help them please step into the next level of your life this is the month of September when a woman is pregnant after nine months she's supposed to give birth and if she does not give birth the doctors have a way of inducing the birth in the name of Jesus everything in the loins of prophecy are located for you to be born in this season I speak to you as a spiritual midwife deliver in the name of Jesus everybody who spoke evil to the ears of your destiny helper that people who should lift you but because they had an information about you in the name of Jesus by the blood I declare a reconnection I declare a reconnection our time is gone but please believe this these are not empty words they are not empty words at all let me pray for your finances again this is what is squeezing people down squeezing families down people are giving up on God because of tea and bread because of the necessities of life listen koinonia i put a mark of exemption in this season over you hear me i command poverty to leave you like the day leaves the night in the name of jesus Christ. this is the beginning of the ember months where the spirit of death moves upon families people who have labored when it's now time to reap, they will say obituary, survive by. I forbid the earth from receiving your body. I forbid the earth from receiving your body. Listen, and for those of you appointed unto death, whether for you or your loved ones, by the name of Jesus Christ, we extend your life in this place. I pray for every student here I don't know what may be happening around your academics but if it requires change we change it now if it requires upgrade we upgrade it now if it requires justice we administer justice now if it requires mercy we provoke mercy now and everyone who is in final year here we graduate you in the name of Jesus Christ two more prayers and we're done everything that represents delay stagnation or limited progress the chain that will allow you move but not so far I break that chain now in the name of Jesus. I release you, make progress. 
I release you make progress. I release you make progress. Last prayer point. Listen to me. Honor is better than money. You can have money and not have honor. Honor is better than education. You can be educated and not have honor. The Bible says, and Jabez, not was more anointed, was more honorable than his brethren. The grace that makes for honor, that can pick you out of a crowd and separate you. In the name of Jesus, may that grace rest upon you now. adding one prayer point to my, my, my spirit and we have to pray it. And the sons of Issachar that they were men who had understanding of the times. Listen, I want to release grace for discernment. It's important to know you can miss seasons just because you are not alive. You can they will come back but it will take a long time to but I pray for you, the grace for discernment, to know seasons, receive that grace now. Maybe I should add one more prayer point. Some of you are praying, Lord, where do I go from here? Should I travel out of the country? Should I relocate to Abuja? Should I go to Lagos? See, Destiny decisions are never to be taken carelessly. Please hold on, hold on. Relax with this thing. You are praying. Listen, there are destiny decisions in life that you need the help of God. Who to marry? Where to live? How many children to give birth to? It looks natural, but it's spiritual. You can give birth to what will fight your blessing. Who to associate with. And Lot went with him. And Jonah went with them. Their experiences were not the same. I pray for you. That in the matters of destiny. May the veil. The haziness. Let it be torn into pieces tonight. I know a gentleman who had an evangelistic call. Sincere person with an evangelistic call. He went to open a church and he began to struggle to pieces as if God did not send him. No offering, no support, no open door. He was struggling because the pastoral grace was not there. Well intentioned, but no discernment. Again, I pray for you. Whatever you are doing now, that is not in the blueprint of your destiny. Whether ministerially speaking, business-wise, maritally speaking, I declare a correction now. I declare a correction now. Elijah was asked to wait at Bucheri for a season, not forever. And a raven brought bread, food for him, and he drank from the brook. But a time came when the brook dried. God needed to change strategy. If Elijah did not know, he would die there. The same God can help you for 10 years, but by the 11th year, you would change strategy. And if you cannot discern what blessed you before can kill you, I pray for you, the grace to know when to switch, the grace to know when God is saying something else, receive that grace in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you. Let the name of the Lord be glorified forever and ever. Jesus remains Lord. Amen. Where is that, my friend, who has been waiting for the altar call? 
he will be the first to come and stand here. While he stands, I want everybody here, overflow one, overflow two, overflow three, overflow four, and all the other overflows. You are saying, Apostle, I need Jesus, I need him fast, and I need him seriously. Whether to surrender your heart for the first time, or you are saying, I want to rededicate my life. He cannot be the only one here. Wherever you are, quickly come and join him. Quickly come and join him. I will only count one to five. If you are coming from outside, please rush. Come and join them. You are saying, Apostle, let this be the night that I encounter Jesus. Is there someone like that? One. Koinonia, is this the best you can do? Two. Please, if you are coming from outside, rush. Run to Jesus. Three. Please clear the way for them. If it's for the altar call, let them come. Apostle, I want to come, but my friend is stopping me. May that friend leave you alone in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to come, but people know me. He says that he who denies me for men, I will deny before my father. You have to rush to come. Someone is coming. Those coming from outside, please rush, 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 rush quickly. Please. Just encourage them so that they will come and stand. Hallelujah. Now, I sincerely salute every one of you. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.